Napa know-how. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash big guy. Look, here's more, uh, here's more stuff for Audible. This is what you need to do. If you like podcasts, sometimes you run out of stuff because you listen to your favorite ones. So what me and the big guy like to do, we read books, but we read them by listening to them while we drive in our cars or if we work out or we're just going around the house. So by going to this, keeps the podcast going, gives us some credibility, and will enhance your brain. So go to audibletrial.com backslash big guy so we get the credit. Over 180,000 titles to choose from on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player. I know Big Guy's got a book coming out soon. You might want to check that out. There's all sorts of wrestling stuff there. I listened to Daniel Bryan's book on tape. That was pretty good. But do it again. Audibletrial.com backslash big guy. Yeah, sorry. I can't. I, maybe I need to read more. Teach Pat Buck how to, how to do a, a live read for podcast book. Somebody write that. In addition to that, I have something serious to ask you guys. Eh, not that serious, but it would really, really, really help us out. Uh, go to podcast.study. Uh, and what that is, is they're doing a little survey to see, uh, taking a survey here. Uh, they want to see what, what our listeners like and helps us with the advertising whatever it is. So if you go to podcast.study, look, it'll take two minutes of your time. Give me a screenshot. You can hit me up on Twitter. I will answer you. Direct link, show me. Buck never stops. Write it to me. Uh, I'll give you a shout out on the podcast or I'll give you a free hug when I see you. But podcast.study helps the algorithm. The, the, al- fucking A. Algorithm. I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not... I, I, I can do this. I can do this. Focus. Podcast.study. Help us out. Enjoy the show. The following advertisement has been paid for by the big guy Ryback. Are you hungry? You know I'm so hungry, big guy. Hey, Mark, what brings you here? So I'm just here to hang out with my all-time favorite superstar of all time. What brings you here? Well, I'm doing a paid advertisement for Feed Me More Nutrition, available at feedmemore.com. Big guy, that is music to my ears. Do you tell the people about your ice-so-hungry grass-fed Whey protein isolate, the best tasting protein on the market. Wake up unlimited energy, the strongest pre-workout on the market. And the big guy, all natural testosterone booster, my personal fave. Big guy, you're on to something with this Feed Me More Nutrition. It is some top quality stuff. Well, thank you, Mark, it is. Feed Me More Nutrition, premium quality, the highest quality supplements on the market today. Available now at feedmemore.com. But wait, there's more. Just for being a listener of Conversation with the Big Guy, you can now save 10%. That's right. Save 10% at FeedMeMore.com on all Feed Me More merchandise and apparel and Feed Me More Nutrition with discount code PODCAST10. P-O-D-C-A-S-T-1-0. PODCAST10. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen... And right now, I'd like to introduce... Whoa, 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 whoa. A guy who lost his smile. A guy who took his brain and walked away from millions of dollars. He hails from Sin City. He... Ah, damn it. That's enough for you two. Shut up. You're... Uh, I, I think he's, uh, I think he said we're fired. Shut up! Pat, slap my ass! It's time for a conversation with the big guy, pal! <laughs> Welcome to Conversation with the Big Guy. I am the big guy Ryback, and I'm sitting here with the one, Pat Buck. 
Hey everybody, we're back again for another exciting edition of Conversation with the Big Guy. But before we go any further, I think you might have some couple things you want to mention. Yeah, we're back uh, back to our normal recording uh, environments, and uh, I feel much more comfortable this week. Um, not looking you dead in the eyes, even though I'm looking you dead yeah. in the eyes right now. But and not having a six foot eight Englishman chuck, chuckling in the corner. That was probably the, <laughs> that was exactly what I was going to say. Wade Barrett or Stu Bennett, I should say, sitting on the couch, feet away from us, just giggling like a child, um, and us <laughs> trying to keep our composure. And like I had no notes. Where I'm big on preparation and like just having a little bit of a system in place. And it's just Wade's over there shaking and laughter at different times. And oh, <laughs> it was actually it was a lot of fun. So. But we'll stick, we'll stick to the format here. I would actually, a big shout out to our buddy, Nate. And Nate is with Takedown Piracy. What is Takedown Piracy? It's an anti-piracy service who is protecting our podcast from being ripped off. And I know these guys have helped out a lot of people in the pro wrestling world. So if you're a podcaster, or maybe you're with a wrestling promotion dealing with piracy issues, do yourself a favor and hit up Nate at takedownpiracy.com. They're super easy to work with and get you great results. And we know that firsthand because they've taken down a lot of uh, people that were uh, infringing upon us with a conver- yeah. conversation with the big guy. And and he's continuing each and every week to get more and more stuff taken down on YouTube. And thank you very much, Nate. Feed Me More Nutrition is now available on Amazon, guys, with their Amazon uh, Prime free shipping. So check out Feed Me More Nutrition on Amazon, and it's always available at feedmemore.com and i'llpumpyouup.com online. Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, the motivational book by the big guy, available on Amazon. Uh, Ah, Damn it. Thought I was going to be flawless this week. (laughs) Uh, Keep going. Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, though, is available on Amazon, guys, in paperback, Kindle, and Audible form now. So go ahead and check that out. And then uh, the P.O. Box of the big guy, P.O. Box 752-740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. That's for all fan mail, you guys. I can't thank you enough. And uh, as you, if you watch me on Snapchat, you saw that uh, I always get to my fan mail each and every week. Uh, this was actually a couple weeks worth in there. It was all backed up, and uh, I always get it back to you. If you send stuff, though, one to two things, guys, please. I get some of you that like to send 10 to 15 trading cards. and. Uh, Jesus. And I, while I, I do appreciate it, it, you know, if you could stick to one to two things, it, it would make my life a little easier. And uh, that's it for me this week. All right. <clears throat> WrestlePROonline.com. April 29th, we return to the Starland Ballroom. Hall of Famer Diamond Dallas Page, Moose, Hornswoggle, Michael Elgin, Pat Buck, and so much more. You can get your tickets at WrestlePROonline.com or starlandballroom.com other dates we just announced may 20th with cody rhodes and cole cabana more to be announced and june 10th will be the first appearance on the i believe the u.s indie scene do it, taking part in the meet and greet of old Stu fake news bennett formerly known as wade barrett he's signed aboard to be with us on june 10th wow and uh you're gonna be a big mic so i couldn't use you that day <laughs> but uh <laughs> I was going to say, I, wanna... I get signed with Wade Barrett every, every, uh, Stu Bennett every week. That's a... Yeah, it was a good time. For Nexus My... bookings, <laughs> book the big guy <laughs> at yahoo.com for Ryback and old Stu Bennett. And if you want to be a professional wrestler in the New York, New Jersey area, I have two, two schools for you. One in New Jersey, one in New York. CreateAProWrestling.com. We have a special enrollment fee, 200 bucks a month, uh, basically forever. And, you know, no hidden costs, no contracts, nothing of that. If you want to join, you know, what I feel is the best professional wrestling training program in the country uh, with myself and Mario Bokora and Kevin Matthews and Dan Moff in New Jersey and with myself and old Kurt Hawkins up in New York, uh, creativeprowrestling.com. That's all my plugs. I was going to ask you, if I showed up to your wrestling school and I paid and, and, and obviously and we didn't have the history that we have, say you didn't even know me. And I go, Pat Buck. I heard you heard you talking about your you know your wrestling school on a podcast. Here's my sure. here's my money. How would you make the big guy Ryback a better wrestler, Pat? I'm putting you on the spot here. Well, I mean, okay, so this is like with no training, you have nothing. No, you just show up being no, a straight, no. straight body guy, correct? No, this is me full that right now. Oh, right, right like now. After like after the run, <laughs> you just don't know me. But I'm like, you know what? I want to fucking get better. I can't go to NXT. 
nor do I want to right now, but I, I would, you know, Pat, I, I'm, 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 I want to get better. So if I walked in fully, this is as the big guy Ryback, sure. just we happen, I happen to live in your hometown. You don't know me. How would you make, make me better? What would you, would you put me through the drills that what would, what would be mm-hmm. Pat Buck's way of, of improving? I go, look, I'm not against anything. I, here's my style. You know, the deal. You know, I could do some technical stuff. Do the people want to see me do that all the time? Probably not. But what what would be putting you on the spot as a trainer? How would you make me better? I think I think it'd be relatively easily. I mean, you, you sound like you're coming in with with a decent attitude. So I'd be like, look, there's probably a lot. You know, I can't teach you anything. You don't. You know, probably know already. But what I could do, is- I have an attitude towards fucking Mark. So that's for sure. When I okay. come in, so yeah, yeah. So maybe I want to learn some shit that you know what I mean, like some really, really shit that I shouldn't be doing. I would say for the first class, what I do with a lot of my guys is, uh, or people that want to train or have trained before, whatever level they may be, you know, not people that have <laughs> been to WrestleMania before, but uh, yeah, yeah. I would have you watch, kind of watch the class and be like, look, man, like, you know, if you want to hop in at any point, like we welcome you to the drills, like feel free to, you know, just watch the first day. Or if you uh, if you want to be part of the team, you, you got to do what the team's doing. You know, we we do stretching, and then we you know we start off with our rolls. We start off with uh, some light bumping, and then you know I, I I have a couple drills in mind to kind of warm people up, and then we get to the big lesson of the day, and we go from there. So uh, okay, I would just pretty much just jump in and just be a part of the class. Then essentially is pretty much, and I'd be like, you know, if you want any input or if you want to do certain things, I'd. I'd allow some creative freedom and, but you know, Hey, uh, would the age factor come in? If I go, Pat, I'm 35 now, you know, the back, would I be, would I have the, I remember being in deep South. I did every drill every day all the time because I was just starting. A mm-hmm. lot of guys would sit out a lot of drills though. And they were like, Oh, my hamstring or all oh, my back. And now that I'm 35 and, and if I go, Pat, all oh, my back's a little sore. Do you cut me any slack or do you go, fuck, if you're here, you're here. Like, what's the deal? This is not would, knowing me. The only thing I think people I would agree with cutting slack is drills that involve way too much bumping. You yeah. know, like if it's a car, like for example, I, we did a drill yesterday where it was, uh, I call it the, stri- I made it up myself. So you, it's uh, two guys go to time. You grab the guy, you give him 10 turn buckles in a row just to start it off. 10 buckles in a row. The guy then sells forward to the other corner. You give him ten. Do you hold up. Wait. Do you hold on to his hand the entire time on the buckles? Yeah. So so okay. like you know. Well, start, yeah. So that's like the war- So ten of those, the guy sells to the next corner, followed up by ten kicks. Now you can do the same kick ten times, or if you want to throw like you know a Daniel Bryan kick, but ten kicks is the goal. Then okay. the other guy sells forward to the next corner. Ten strikes, whether you throw punches or forearms or whatever it is, has to be with your arms. Uh, yeah. Then the final one is ten of whatever strikes you want to throw, and then you go back to the original corner. You block, give the guy the old elbow, then you turn it around. Ten, 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 ten. So that's like a basic does strike any, drill. Does anybody ever do the old double fucking throat thrust uh, for the strike? Because to me, I would just do ten of those <laughs> in a row for every hand strike. <laughs> <laughs> ten. I think I'm going to do that. Wait, are you talking about the old? There's two of them, though. Are you talking about the X chop to the throat or the big Mongolian chop where the, they, they come? Down? I was talking. No. So I was talking about the, the thrust to the throat thrust. with the double MVP used to do them all the time. Uh, but also that and the old head, the ear clap. Big um, ear. Yeah. 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 Sure. Do, does anybody in your class ever do those? Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's I a- had a wrestling fan come up to me and go, man, I really wish guys would do the old ear clap again. I go, no, I'll do it in one of my matches for you. He wasn't. In, uh, but I was just like, yeah, you don't see that all the time because you got to do it really well for it to look good. But you need that good <laughs> noise or else it looks real, you know, shitty. You I know, think who, yeah. who did that all the time? Roddy Piper. You know who does that now? Austin Aries actually does the old ear smack. I think I saw him do it recently, which kind of I think might have subconsciously put it in my mind. Yeah, it was. Uh, but I just laughed just doing the drills, just th- throat thrust over and over again, just watching the guy sell that. And it, you're just like, Jesus, he Ryback really loves those throat thrust, <laughs> throat thrust, <laughs> ear smack ten times. Yeah. <laughs> the poor the poor guy selling the whole class just laughing because it's kind of ridiculous doing it any more than once. 
Oh, you know, I, I remember, I'm already coming up with new things. I remember that being a thing, and like you know, because we've talked about this before, how they took away. You know, it used to be you watch any great match. I mean, even with Kurt Angle and Michaels, you know, Flair, they could cut their their baby faces off by going to the eyes, and they got rid of that. Oh, um, going to the, that was by the way. 99% of the time, the heels' number one go-to moves was going to the eyes. And it and worked. Then, like, it, it was fine. Because it, because it was phony, fake pro wrestling. But now we can't do that. It's like, no, we're not, you're not allowed to go to the eyes unless you're KO and then I, you win the IC title with it. But <laughs> <laughs> that and nut shots were Ryback's two biggest weaknesses, if you remember. Oh, sure. The, the nut shot and then the rake to the eyes got me every fucking time. But I remember saying a couple times, too, where I'm like, okay, well, you know, we can't go to the eyes. How do we cheat then? I'm like, is this legal? And I would do the old Rip Rogers throat thrust. I'm like, yeah, that's legal. I go, okay, let me get this straight. I can't poke a guy in the eyes, but I can hit him as hard as I can with an X movement to his Adam's apple. And that's yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. Okay, whatever. Oh, totally cool. <laughs> do you think if Seamus was in your drill class, he would just do 10 bro kicks in the corner for the, for the kick strikes? Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's got the, the beat of the Bowery drum, the those chest forearms, which I'm a big fan of. He loves the bro. I love Seamus, actually, though. Uh, he's very physical in a good way. I was at the gym. We were, I was talking with Seamus, and uh, I, we, were just, we were just talking about a bunch of stuff I was, like we were talking about last week. But um, I remember he actually tried throwing a running knee that looked just like his bro kick, the same setup. And but he was hitting people with a knee, and the crowd was so confused. And I remember me, yeah, me and Dolph were like sitting next to each other back there, and like it always amazes me, wrestling fans, like when they want, like if it's like you can't do things that are close, like, I, and I actually it made me question myself, my ring entrance, because I come out and I boot, do the the single arm. We talked about it before, how it's collecting the energy in the arena, but I do the dub, I do the double arms actually four times but and this actually hit me the other day i go why the fuck do i do it four times because that was just i started that entrance before feed me more caught on so it was never a thing i need to switch it to just three times because every time i do it it's just like the feed me more taunt but in the crowd does the feed me more but then i do the fourth one and it throws them off and like i because i've heard people like go to do feed again after because they'll go feed me more and when I do it and I should make that third one the big one but instead I then do a fourth one and then I hear some people go feed and then it's just me with my head down and it throws them off so but I was just thinking about that with like wrestling fans like if you do anything close to something that they're already used to doing it throws them off so I gotta maybe on my shows uh I'll uh, start doing it here practicing the three okay interesting but uh yeah what uh how was your week? Now that we're back on track, we had a successful WrestleCon. You had a successful WrestlePro show. Everything was uh, – you drew about half the crowd you would have had I been in the main event, but you still uh, – successful nonetheless. You can, you can take that up with, uh, with Cody Rhodes, who was uh, – his, his agent. To take it up with uh, his agent, yeah. <laughs> no, um, uh, it, uh, it was not a good week, and it was, in, in fact, probably one of the worst weeks – and hopefully it'll get better, but uh, it was a very, very shitty week. I look forward to getting back because I can decompress and I don't really have any event. I mean, planning for an event does take a lot out of me and I like to prepare and I have April, May, June. I have two in June. I have one in July. So I, I can kind of, but plus doing your stuff and doing Wade's stuff and doing the training school and, and helping out other companies and doing like a lot of stuff like that, like uh, my dance card is full, so I looked forward to, to resting a bit, and um, it was a fucking... You got to rest in life. That, I've learned that, like, talking with Wade this week, too, I like he took the whole year off and chilled out, and I think that's so valuable. Yeah. Like, I, 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 like, I really need to go on a vacation, because I, I, I was like, man, I just started doing bookings, and, like, I'm working every week again, and I was like, I really haven't... Just like you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go to the Bahamas, so I need to I need to set something up. But to continue on, no, go ahead. I, just I think to you should let me know. We can't be afraid to live life. I owe the old wife ski a vacation for the hell I probably put her through this week and every day. So we'll figure out a a place to go if you get yourself a young lady. 
Uh, <laughs> so anyway, basically I came back and let, let me set this up. So I was in pain the whole week at WrestleCon, um, but I thought it was kind of just wrestler aches and pains. Now, um, let's just say I'll, I'll go. I had no idea, by the I way, about it. this. You telling me that last week, though, and I told you doing the podcast, I thought you were short on some things. Like I would say, so, Pat, you got any opponents you'd like me to face? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that was where I was like, man, like what's going on? And then, but keep going. No, I think, I think a lot of times when I get quiet on the pod, I mean, I'm a quiet person, but I, I was really thinking about segues where to go. But I, I was, uh, you know, when I was in pain most, and I'll say it at, 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 when I'm sitting down at Hooters, I'll, I'll tell you why. So basically, um, I had my, I wrestled at WrestleCon 2. It was me and, uh, Mario Bocara, Kevin Matthews versus the BWO. Um, we the kick spot with that guy. By the way, I retweeted it. It was one of my favorite things. <laughs> I on Twitter. If you haven't checked it out, it was whatever the guy's name yes. was, and uh, where you ha- held him. And I'm sorry to keep cutting no, no, you off, but this fine. is too funny not to mention the the spot where you you uh, you had the guy hold him and you chopped Nova a couple times. <laughs> Or wait, or was it, yeah, that, and then you go, okay, okay, something, and he, again, again, and uh, in the way, your voice, just how you did it, it made me laugh so hard, and then you kicked the shit, and super kicked the shit out of this guy, who was perceived to just be a fan, and it made me just start laughing, because in my head, I'm just thinking, how funny would this be with a kid? <laughs> <laughs> what, with a little kid? Like, like you get it, like, when you get it with somebody, one of the guy's sons, you're like, look. And then you give him a working kick, but it looks like you kick a kid. Like what? Like God damn! I laughed so fucking hard at that. Thanks. That that was uh, the big. So basically, Barstool Sports is like a huge. I mean, they have a following. Like any any guy that goes to work and works in an office, when they get bored of their computer, they go to Barstool. They have. A, I mean, they have like. I okay. want to say like a a ten million to twenty million people reach. Like it's just enormous. Oh wow! Very big following because they have like. They have shows and, and media stuff and like they're they're just everyday things. So anyway, like one of my buddies who I've I've he was a student at my school for a little bit, but uh he is a very smart kid. He's designed a lot of shirts for me, he's designed gear for me, he's just like a young brainiac with and he's a fan of the business. He actually does he's done stuff for me, he's done stuff for Cody, he's done stuff for the Young Bucks. Um, good kid. And now he works full time for Barstool. And like he he does okay. a lot of fun stuff. So like He's like, hey, I kind of want to come down. I go, sure, come down. And uh, we had this, like, idea. Like, hey, like, would you want to be a plant on the show? He goes, yeah, I'll film it for fucking Barstool. I go, great. So I go, he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I got this idea. I'm like, what about this? And I pull Nova aside. Nova's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Let's do it. Uh, doing the spot that that we said uh, where, and his buddy from Barstool pretended to be a regular cameraman, which was great. Uh, so I, I knew the camera angle and I knew I had to like kind of turn Nova to feed towards the camera and it's on, but you can, yeah. the headline is we sent our intern, <laughs> this is what made me laugh to WrestleMania. He got knocked the fuck out on his first night <laughs> on his first day. <laughs> <laughs> like all you had to do was go there and record the show asshole. And you go and you get knocked the fuck <laughs> out. Like it was, I, yeah, I'll keep going. It was so good. So check it out. It's me and Nova saw. and old Robbie Barstool on Twitter. It was fucking great kid. So anyway, like, uh, but I told him, I was like, look, man, I'm like, I'm like, if I throw a shitty kick, this is going to be terrible. He's like, he's like, hit me with everything you got. I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> so I connect and it was really like it. Honestly, I was like, it, I, it looked amazing. I, it was the perfect noise. I was like, I just fucking broke his jaw. And, um, it, it was great. Everyone involved was great. I'm so happy. It was a highlight. Like everyone, all my friends and family see that shit. Uh, so if you want to check that out, you can. Now, after that kick, Nova just nuts me on the guardrail and we go back to our match. Now, after the match, like my leg hurt. My leg hurt before the match. I'll, I'll be honest. Like it, it was my hip, yeah. my thigh and my leg were had been sore for about a week and a half. And then after that match, I'm like, oh, man, the next day I woke up. I'm like, it's probably from that. I hit the guardrail. No big deal. Um, At the convention, which we're at all day long, uh, it really started to act up. And then when it really acted up is, do you remember the incident we had with the old money? I was going to say, we didn't talk about this last week, which uh, it blew me away. I've never been more concerned for someone because we get to Hooters. And uh, as we know, you deal with cash at all these conventions. 
and uh, you had a, a safe box with you that it was on the table and I moved it behind the table at some point and you guys did a drop in mm-hmm. there uh, at some point during the show with a considerable amount of money. Yeah. And which we, in the parking lot in Hooters, you go, let me just grab my uh, my money box because I brought my suitcase in because it just, I don't like ever leaving money lying around or anything. And you <laughs> go ahead, I'll let you pick it up. E- even here. a step further is that, okay, so now we're, we're, we're there all day long and you guys... You know, dare I say, both you guys killed it at the convention. It was fucking great. So It was a win for everyone. Big yeah. win for everybody. So, like, you know, you don't want to just have this giant thing of money. So I have, you know, uh, Jim Cornette has a little tennis racket. I have <laughs> Pat Buck has a little safe with them. Like, literally a mini, mini <laughs> safe with a combination on it that I put a lot of my yeah. stuff. Um, now, we leave. Now, here's the thing, too. We valet parked our car. And I... Also has a camcorder in it too, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> as you <laughs> wink into it. <laughs> and if you put in the wrong code, it just blows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for future warning to anybody else. But do you remember how far the valet was from the convention? I say legit, maybe, maybe almost half a mile. That's how far. Yeah, it, we were. It was. It was quite the trek, and anybody who was there will know from the convention center to where you get the cars at the valet, it was a walk. It was a huge property. So now we finish up, we pack our bags, we walk close to half a mile, We get I get my car from valet, we drive down the street, we get to Hooters, and I open up the thing, and you're like, hey, you're going to take your money inside? I go, yeah, I will. Oh, wait, where's my safe? And now we looked at each other in terror, and everybody feels bad for me. And I'm like, oh, my God. I felt like shit because I was the one that put it on the floor back there. But you told me, go go ahead and move it. You were aware of it, but I still felt guilty because I was the one that physically moved it to put to make room for my goddamn fucking feed me more more nutrition towels. And then I, that's right, that's right, that was it. I was looking for yeah, hangers yeah, yeah. for you. This is why I felt really bad. Yeah, you're like, Do we have hangers. I'm like, I'll find you hangers. We need hangers for these goddamn t-shirts so people can see them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm missing thousands of dollars. Sorry, no, Pat. Oh, so anyway, um, and also I see the look on Wade's face and everybody's like, oh, fuck. And then I feel, even though like I'm, I'm concerned, I'm like, that money's gone. I still know this is my fault. No matter what, I'm, I'm, I'm paying people that day. I will eat this, but whatever. I get in the car. I drive back. I run as fast as I can. My fucking jeans rip all the way up the crotch. <laughs> and I'm... Um, I always bring two pairs of jeans on the road now just in case I spill coffee or something on a pair. But it's, it's, I used to bring one all the time. And then I think I finally I spilt coffee all over myself okay. one morning before like a media. Mm-hmm. And I was so embarrassed. I got it out pretty good. But it was, it, I was like, I'll bring two from now on. So no, I did not. Now I le- actually left those jeans down there, but I, I only had one pair with me and I wore them <laughs> ripped like the next two days. So yeah, you couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah unless you're looking at my crop, I was embarrassed. Like fuck, <laughs> like, but we had no time let, to go yeah. to the store, no nothing. So anyway, I get back there. Luckily, my safe is there, and it was open too. But the money was still there. I was so fucking happy. Um, yeah. We lucked out. And I remember you said you were like feeling guilty, like texting me. So uh, what do you want from Hooters, just in case? <laughs> 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 if I didn't find that case, I would have been pretty pissed. I don't give a fuck about Hooters. No, I didn't. I, I had the message typed out, and I was like, man, because I, I wanted you to put your. We were starving. We hadn't eaten in like seven hours. Yeah. So like everybody, that just adds to the everything. And I was like, well, if I put his food in for us, when like. But I had to wait for you to text me because you hadn't texted me back. And I'm like, man, if that money's gone, the last thing he's going to give a shit about is chicken wings right now. <laughs> so I, like, I had to wait for you to text me. And then, thank God, that, like the first text I sent after you said I found it was like, oh, do you want us to order for you? <laughs> so <laughs> everything worked out great. Thank God. Safe was fine. Now, going back, my leg was bothering me then, too. And it was bothering me next couple of days, but I just figured we're always in pain. Honestly, I hate saying it. We're always in pain. Like we're, we're just used to it. Yeah. Now either mentally or physically. Yeah, pretty much. It's but like, but we're just, <laughs> well, I gotta, I gotta lose to him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, get back on the, uh, we finish up when I fly back to New York. Um, I basically take a nap on mania day. When I wake up, my leg is swollen. It hurts. Um, like I can, I can barely walk. Like I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Okay. And I decide, let me go to an urgent care, which is like right around the block from me, which is like 50 bucks for my insurance. And like, 
they can take a look. And they took a look and they're like, we don't really know what it is, but you know, you could have some sort of infection, but, it, but normally when you have an infection, uh, your leg, is, your, your area is very hot. It could look like a pimp. That is true though. It yeah. could look like a pimple. Um, they, they felt a mass, but they're like, we don't, you know, you need to get it checked out by an emergency room. Um, they're like, but, but here's some antibiotics. I said, okay, fine. I went home. I slept. I woke up. My leg's even worse the next day. Uh, I go, I go to the emergency room and I go in there and it's like the fucking walking dead. Uh, it's, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. everyone's like, and not for nothing, there's people there with real stuff, but there's also a lot of people there fucking faking it and like. Yeah, I will say, though, if you ever want to just be thankful to be in, like, have life and to be in a walk into an emergency room and, like, there's some people with some serious, serious stuff going on. Um, But to your point, there is also both ends of the spectrum on that. But yeah, I'll let you. So and now I go in there and they're like, what are you here for? And I explain, I go, look, I don't at this point, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with my leg. And then I finally put two and two together. So like two weeks ago, um, I get everything delivered to me a- on Amazon. You know, I live my life on Amazon and I have these, yeah. uh, I woke up from a nap one day. I had a, the delivery bell went off and it was an Amazon package. So I'm like half asleep. I get the Amazon package. I have these really sharp knives I got from my wedding, which are fucking awesome. And one of them is like a little mini captain hook knife that I always open all my fucking boxes with. Uh, this, this yeah. thing's razor sharp. So I'm half asleep after getting this package. And I, I believe it was probably Zevia, to be honest with you. Uh, I go to open the box and I miss the box and I cut my wrist and like Jeez. a piece of, I literally see a piece of skin go flying and blood is pouring. Then I drop the, really? I drop the knife and the, a, a little part of the knife caught my thigh on the way down. So now I'm, uh. I'm bleeding from my wrist. My wrist is literally gushing blood like fucking like won't it's one of those things where i'm like holy shit something that that was bad but my leg isn't that yeah. bad so now i fucking get the bleeding to stop i put alcohol on it um it finally subsides T- tito's or peroxide <laughs> peroxide a little rubbing alcohol <laughs> and i use that thing you put on uh whatever a septic pencil or something it, it stops the bleeding okay <clears throat> i put some Wrap on my thing, and that day I went to the gym, and now I'm I'm putting two or two together because I stretch out in this martial arts room, which always smells like fucking sweat. Uh, yeah, it, those places just layers upon layer of sweat and bacteria. So I do that, and of course I'm an idiot wearing short shorts. And then later on that day, <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole! <laughs> I, if I'm training, I, I want to. I got my tank top on, my short shorts. I look like a fucking '80s basketball player. Like I, I all my shorts have the or they will always go past my knees. But ever since my ankle injury, where I have the scar, I don't wear shorts anymore. Actually, I always wear pants. Really? I think is yeah. I'm uh, very subconscious about my um, or very conscious, I should say, about my my scar is all the way up. My it looks like just it just looks disgusting. Huh. To me, it looks fine. It's all smoothed over, and but I, I just I don't like being reminded of it. Honestly, I don't. I I I wear pants year round, summer everything. And you wear like full um, sweatshirts, like you, you're very your your triple five XL shirts, like you're very covered up. Yeah, three 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 or four XL shirts, and I uh, I always just like yeah, I'm just like I I don't like drawing attention. That's why I I just like being a normal guy when I'm just me. Like it's just. It's just the way I've always been. And so, meanwhile, I'm the opposite. Continue. I'm wearing fucking tight pants and tank tops. So shorts, <laughs> shorts and eye socks. <laughs> Your ass hanging out. <laughs> so, and then after that, uh, I'll have to wear to do that just once, <laughs> just to get a picture. Uh, and after that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in my car, and then I go to the wrestling school, and both of them, same thing. I'm I'm stretching. I'm I'm around grime and dirt. So I think it started there. And I also think from wrestling, like something got in there. Okay. So yeah. now I'm at the emergency room and I'm, I'm kind of running down what's happening and they don't, they not, they don't really believe me. They're just like, they, 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 they really? poke around my leg. They're like, yeah, there's something there, but it's not an abscess. They're like, you have antibiotics, right? And I go, yeah. They're like, which one? I'm like, I don't know. It begins with a C. They're like, okay, um, finish those up ibuprofen and soak it with soak yourself in a bathtub. And I, I go, okay. I go, there's something really wrong here. I go, I'm not taking a risk. They go, all right, whatever. They're like, we don't, we don't think that you're in that much pain. And I'm like, 
whole, I'm like, what do you think I'm here? I don't want to be here. I'm like, I, I fucking yeah. I need to get checked out. They order an ultra. That's pretty amazing, actually, that they would. Act, yeah, that blows my mind a little le- bit. Le- it legit say you don't seem like you're in pain. I go, why the fuck would I be here then? Yeah. Like, I'm not a hypochondriac. I hate being here. And that was that that wasn't probably the doctor. I would take it easy. Either, no, it was, was the it? PA. Yeah. So, yeah, they order usually is the way it was. they order an ultrasound for me, which, mind you, I have good insurance. But if you don't, that's between I think I think up to a thousand bucks for an ultrasound, maybe more. Yeah, um, they don't. Oh, if you're paying, yeah, yeah. If you're paying cash, do they charge you more actually than what your insurance would actually pay? For oh, really? It, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's all screwed up. But. So they do the ultrasound. They don't find anything, and then again, they're like, "Look, there's there's no abscess. There's we don't see any infection. Like you could do a CAT scan because you can. It, the thing you can feel is deep. It's not on the skin. It's underneath somewhere." So they go, look, the only thing you do is a CAT scan and we have to inject you with dye and then, you know, um, you have to wait a while. And I said, you know, me and my wife looked at each other and we're like, what do I do? She's like, go for it. You need to get this. You know something's wrong. Yeah. And I get it. And once I get that done, the fuck, the nurse, the PA, and now the doctor start freaking the fuck out. And they come running up and they're like, they're like, we found something. Um, it's a six centimeter by 3.5 centimeter, a thing called a phlegmon. And what a, phleg- a yeah. phlegmon is, is basically the precursor when you have staph or when you have like some sort of a bacteria abscess, apparently like it's self-contained because your body's trying to fight it. Mine's before that. So things are getting in and out of it. But like, I basically have a staph infection. Like, yeah, yeah. So they're, 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 they find, instead of, you know, releasing me on ibuprofen. They're like, they're like, they're like, here's something for the pain. I'm like, look, I'm, I don't really care about the pain that much. I'm like, I just want to cure it. Uh, but yeah. they go, oh, you have those antibiotics, right? Like, that's all we can do for now. Um, we'll just give you more of those. And then I go, I don't really know the name of it. Can you double check the pharmacy for me? And they did. And they found they were giving me the wrong antibiotics. So, which is the most important thing on all of that. You need the right one. So if I would have left, I would have had this infection in my leg that I didn't know about taking the wrong medicine that couldn't have contained it. So I finally got everything I needed. Um, and it just goes to show it's why being smart. Yeah. It's why being smart pays off like being self-aware. So, uh, so I had this thing called a phlegmon. Um, right now I have to wake up tomorrow, go to the emergency room. And if on it, they said like, if it doesn't, I think it went down. I feel better. I feel great. But when I drive and even sitting down now, I'm I'm in pain. But yeah, you know, it's only day four or whatever. But if this isn't good tomorrow, <laughs> I have to. I'm going to get cut open. I'm going to get surgery. So I really don't know yet. Um, that that is what is when you were telling me this. So is it warm to the touch at all, or hot at all? No, now or which no? is why it threw people off. They're like, you don't. You can walk around. It's not hot. There's there was no abscess on the surface. Um, yeah. they said they had to look really deep and that's when they saw that it's like collecting my tissue is all inflamed and like, um, they said it could be from a trauma, which made me think like from the, I think something got in there and wrestling and dirt and grime and yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like I, that's scary and you're doing the right thing. And if they have to cut it out tomorrow, that's going to. It'll suck because they're going to have to have a drain in your leg. It's probably going to be like a shitty week. It will be, yeah. um, but you're gonna, but you're gonna be, you're gonna be fine. You have to get it done. That's what. Did we ever talk about when I got staph infection and when I had the Intercontinental Championship? You've mentioned it before. Like I don't know. Do you know? Was there an exact thing no. that set it off, or you still don't even know? Yeah. No. So I that week wrestling up to leading up to that TV on Monday night. That whole weekend, I actually had cut my finger open really bad wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I wear the gloves out there, but my fingers are exposed. And I, it was Big Show. Uh, me and Big Show were wrestling, and uh, go figure. <laughs> and it was uh, my finger got cut open in the match somehow. Mm-hmm. And like was bleeding really, really bad. And those mats are just so... like it's not, And that's not like a WWE thing. It's just in general. Yeah. Like when... It's just the way that it is whenever you're in wrestling mats, MMA mats, you know, wrestling ring. There's just bacteria everywhere. And so anyways, totally fine. I taped it up for the last couple matches on the live event. 
and, and disinfected it and stuff, but it was out there for almost an entire match cut open because it happened early in one match in the beginning of the weekend. Mm-hmm. So anyways, uh, it was on Raw, and I did something where I did a, uh, I think I did a house show dive onto Sheamus, and I, but I came down and I banged my knee on the ground mm-hmm. somehow, which I usually land on my feet when I do that, but for whatever reason, I, my knee hit the ground, and it, it hurt, it, I hit it hard. Okay. And I remember like, fuck, that hurt. And uh, so anyways, I had to drive, we had to drive to Birmingham from Atlanta to Birmingham the next day. I had media that morning. Um, like, so, so like where you're getting like maybe two or three hours sleep, get up, go do media. I was up almost the entire night. My knee on the drive from Atlanta to Birmingham just swelled up like a balloon Jesus. and uh, it got hot instantly. And like, I had no idea um, what was going on. And I had to go get up. I could barely walk. I, got up they and they're like do you want to do this i go we we can't like not go to media and the last thing i was thinking is like last thing like i had every right to like to bow out of that situation and i had an excuse but like i was just thinking i would hate to be because they're they're gonna call a ziggler or cesaro or somebody who they know is reliable for media Mm -hmm. and i was just like and and i i'm friends with those guys i was just like oh i would fucking I don't want them to have like, cause if you're not expecting it, you don't want that call. Okay. And, um, so I just fucking toughed it out and I did it. We got to the arena. Dr. Amon, uh, had to, to test it. And, uh, he instantly, as soon as they found out it was the, a form of staff infection. Was it MRSA? They, 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 they were afraid it could have been because of how severe it got from one day to the next. Mm. And uh, they had to take me. Thank God we were in Birmingham with Dr. James Andrews and uh, their entire staff down there, Douglas Mm -hmm. Dugas, sorry. And uh, he came down and they took great, the Birmingham hospital took such great care of me. And, uh, but they had to keep me there for days and they were literally taking a huge needle and having to jam it into my knee and kept like, so you got to remember like doctors, you got to think if you get into this field, like you like cutting things open, you like, these guys, like, they like this kind of stuff. So this, in particular, doctor, though, wanted to cut me open right away and drain it. And I was just like, man, like, let's let's just see if we could drain it to get it to go down. Mm-hmm. And um, they had to keep, they, i wake up morning, afternoon, and night, and the guy would come in with a huge, long needle. I'm telling you, no, no lidocaine, just stick it Ugh. in and, like, and suck all this bloody pus out. And it would keep blowing back up. And then finally they, they, they released me to fly home with all these antibiotics. And it came down to my knee. I, they showed the picture on WWE where my leg looked like it was the size of a basketball, my, my, my thigh and my knee. And this was like well into it when it should have been down. I'll never forget the week came where it was like if I wasn't able to come back and we didn't know when I was going to come back that I would, I would have been stripped of the title right then and not been on SummerSlam. And uh, they, because I'd missed the one pay-per-view, and uh, they, luckily, I woke up one morning, and it was just, like, way better. Hmm. And, uh, but I had swelling for probably a month after. That's where I hurt my knee a little bit up there with a with month? Big show. Fuck. It, but it was, that was even after it had went down, and it went away eventually. But it was, uh, if you got to get it cut out, they have to literally, like, cut you open and drain when you, when you get infected, the human body is so when it's healthy, it's healthy. When it gets infected, it's like walking dead. Yeah. Like you, your body just eats away at like, you have to get that cut out and, but they have to have it, it. They put a drain in you where essentially you have to have the fluids have to, the, the pus will build back up in there, but it ha, it, it just comes out of the drain. And it, it's, I hope you don't have to do that. I hope it, it goes away and, and whatnot, so, but but you're going to have to keep me up Fuck. to date on all that. God, I'm going to throw up right now. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, no, no, it's not It's not a pleasant experience, and that's why when you told me you had that, I was like, staph infection, it was one of the most painful things I've ever had. Like, it, I mean, it hurts to even you just, it, it just when your tissues and your cells get infected, it just, it, it's just, I don't wish it upon anybody. But I think the lesson to be said from all this is like, literally question your doctors like don't fucking if you know something's wrong you gotta you gotta stand up yeah. and, and like i literally 
the doctors were idiots. The, the like I, I could have believed. I actually went for a second opinion too yesterday. I had to leave Creator Pro. Yeah, and I was like, I, I need to go. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I'll pay the copay. Luckily, this this doctor is a really good one. He goes, nope, this is good advice. Just make sure you get it checked out, and if it doesn't yep. go down, then you're gonna have to go in and get cut open. But, um, yeah, like because I've been lucky, man. I, I injury wise, outside of breaking my nose, and I talked about the pec thing. I feel fine now, but like. I I've I'm very lucky with injuries. However, I have the immune system of like a fucking kindergartner. Like I, <laughs> dude, I get every little <laughs> sickening. Like I remember me and Daniel Daniel I, Bryan talking about that because like he fucking he always got sick. He yeah. said too. He has. I'm like, oh, me too. Like I have shitty immune system. If if someone fucking sneezes, I I could I take a bump because I'm fucking. I'm t- I'm I'm telling you, and I've mentioned this on social media, but I'll do it on the podcast. If you want to strengthen your immune system, it is, and I'm going to regret this because then it's always going to be out on Amazon now because it's, uh, gar- it's not just regular garlic, but it's called Ali Ultra or Ali Max. Okay. Um, Ali Ultra is the stronger one that I do. Ali Max is the other one. It's made in the UK also, I believe, but it's called Allison. It's, it's in garlic. If you take that with vitamin C, oh, well. it strengthens it. I'm telling you right now, anybody out there listening, it's like eating the garlic. You actually get the garlic. You could do it with the garlic bulbs, but get the pills. It's way easier. But if you're on a budget, go out and buy real garlic and get some vitamins and C, 1,000 milligram capsules. Take it once or twice a day. I do it once a day for a maintenance dose, and I can't tell you. I haven't been sick hmm. in, in years since I started doing it, and it, it, that's traveling all the time and in and out of airports and Allison, A-L-L-I-C-I-N, I believe, is the name of the, the substance in garlic that is really beneficial. Uh, and it's good for your cholesterol levels, your blood pressure. And uh, check it out, guys, if you want to strengthen your immune system. And it, it, I take it every day. I got it in my little, my four pill boxes that I have of all my supplements. And that's garlic and, and uh, vitamin C or, or my morning regimen. That'll be the so. new thing for me to check out. I mean, I, myself, I know a lot of people get a lot from this podcast, those little, like you turned me on to electrolytes this year. I bought all the same ones you get now. I never, I never yeah. took those before. Like they're, I'm coming at, Yeah. I'm coming out with my own, uh, actually, I'm not going to name the name yet because I, I got to actually finish the trademark with that. I do it as I'm coming out with them, but, um, you could be sure it's fucking part of my gimmick, uh, <laughs> as everything else. He's so creative. Um, but an electrolyte BCAA, uh, pump mix, but electrolytes are just so important. They really are. And uh, in fact, I remember I took a little nap today. I li- I'm a big fan of, I like to sleep six hours a night, but I always love to get a 20 to 30 minute nap at some point in the day. That's my routine. And I woke up from... If I don't, if I don't get eight hours, if I do five or six and I know I'm... T- I need a little power nap on the couch. I usually set my alarm for 20 or 30 minutes and I put an audio book on and I see where I'm mm-hmm. at on the audio book. And I always, I go into like a power sleep where I'm still awake mm-hmm. And it's the greatest nap in the world. Like I, I, I'm a big believer in those. Also, if you if you're going teetering that line of five six hours, I was going to say that uh, I was rudely interrupted by my nap today by a text message. Oh God! From one of my uh, students, one of my proteges. He's an indie guy, uh, Maxwell Jacob Feinstein, and it was a question. Oh wow! It was a question that he learned from the podcast. He goes, "Hey, I'm at Chipotle right now, so explain to me the." The fat and carbs, you know, not what to eat, what with what. And I was so mad that he woke yeah. me up from my nap. I just put the phone down and went back to sleep. <laughs> but I would have just said burrito with all the guacamole and sour cream you can handle. That's it. just <laughs> he, he wakes up with extra love handles tomorrow. So, uh, but yeah, that was my week. I'm kidding. And, uh, Don't do that. What uh, what's going on on your end? No, I mean, that's a hell of a week. I and I. Look forward to hearing your update tomorrow on everything going on with that. Hopefully, they, it, it goes down enough where they're confident that the antibiotics are going to do it. Um, I also, as we know, I've had my right shoulder issues. And uh, I went in for my MRI for um, my stem cell research on my right shoulder. We sound like two and, grizzled uh, fucking... <laughs> yeah. You know. I am fucked up, guys. Uh, no, but uh, I, I'm really big on... So here's the deal. Am I, I'm totally fine um, in, in the sense of every wrestler that wrestles for WWE ends up fucked up one way or the Absolutely. other. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody has back and neck issues. Usually shoulder issues are really common. 
and knees, shoulders, backs, and necks. Mm-hmm. The, it, the, the four joint areas, like, it just, it, it's, they get fucked up. And uh, I did a lot of power moves. I do a lot of, of, of power lifting. And uh, my right shoulder, I had surgery on it years ago, like in 2008 or nine. Never was the same. And that was my baseball arm I always threw with. Mm-hmm. Um, I've strengthened it in the last years since being off of these rehab exercises. Um, but the joint, the cartilage is all worn out in the joint. And like my shoulder, my shoulder joint is moving around on me in there. And, and like, am I totally cool? I, it doesn't stop me from doing anything. I can still work out. I'm just being smart. I'm trying. I'm, I'm away from, we're controlling. I'm, I'm wrestling a lot still. But I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm working smart as far as not doing any of the power moves that agitate it. But at the same time, too, you told me yourself that. I was like, look, you need, because I see you. I'm like, you're, you're really, Lombardi had this to say, that you're always going out there. You're always having long matches. You're always putting in your effort. And I said, why don't you, like, take it easy? You don't have to beat everyone with, like, certain things. And you said you have this pressure that you feel like fans would be disappointed if they don't see certain things, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, it was, uh, I feel like if they see me wrestling a 400-pound, like, Ligurski guy or like a Fala Ba mm-hmm. like and you even said with Fala just clothesline them and like I just in my head like it's just lazy I'm like they're not coming here they're coming here to watch the thing I can do better than anybody is my power stuff mm-hmm. so like I ha- I I feel I have to give that to them even if it's you know a hundred and something people or whatever it's uh I don't know that's just how I am I'm always like that because I just picture that kid could be the only match he goes to all year. And then it's like, like, I'm sure he'd be fine with the clothesline. But my thing is, is I'm really, I, I am really strong. I don't want to, even though I'm hurt, like I want to be able to still be really strong in their eyes. Like, cause I, I watch like, and this isn't, I like, I, for the record, I love Goldberg and I think his run in WWE was great Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I just give my opinion like on certain things and you could tell He's a 50-year-old man now. Like, I watch WrestleMania, and, like, we'll talk about that. But, like, when he went to Jack Hammer, Brock Lesnar, he could barely, like, because he had to wrestle a longer match. And he's, he's beat up now. He's older. Yeah. And, like, I, I never want to make it look like a struggle. Like, I want to, like, because I'm still young. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, so, I, even, but I have issues because I've been doing this for a long time. So while I'm away right now and I'm not on TV anywhere and I'm enjoying life and, and busting my ass and this other stuff, it would be really easy to, to not get this fixed and uh, neglect it. Where, I, you know what? I'd rather spend some money. We have this technology available now. I don't want to have shoulder surgery or anything like that because I don't think it's really going to help that much. But stem cell research, I've been told, can repair my shoulder back to 100% or close to yeah. it. So like... Why not? Like, this is the time to do it. Recharge my batteries. My back is back and better than ever. Get my shoulder back to full strength. And, like, I'm going to be like a 20-year-old all over again. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's it, – it, I really – it's just taking care of your body. And I. it doesn't matter what you do in life. I've always said you have to take care of yourself or at least be aware of what's going on and, and work around your injuries and whatnot. So um, I had to go in for my MRI – and they had to inject me with uh, – we had an MRI on my shoulder last year. They didn't inject me with the dye, though, so the MRI was a little sketchy um, where they, they didn't have a clean MRI. Mm-hmm. So they, they had to inject the, the, the nurses and the ladies yesterday. It was three women, and they were just uh, – they always make – they made me feel really good about myself because I feel like my body – I'm not lifting quite as heavy as I was, and like I'm still 278, 280, and uh, but like they, they're like they're like, oh geez, what do you do? And like I had to take my shirt off for the thing, so I felt really good about myself. <laughs> but the, the and the lady, the nurse, they had to like light a cane up my arm, and she had this huge needle in my shoulder capsule um, from the front, uh, and, and like, she's like, you might want to shut your eyes. This is going to be painful. And I, I, I go, no, I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it was fine. You don't feel a thing. But they, she had, I could feel the needle moving around in my arm. She goes, God, you got so much muscle. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I'm just over on the table smiling, like is ear to ear. Like, yeah, I know. Like, even though I haven't done shoulder presses in forever. And, uh, but she got the, the, the dye injected into my joint. Um, and then they got the MRI. So I'll hopefully go next week. I got into the, this week. Coming up, 
is going to be off for me and uh, where I'll have a weekend off. And I think we're going to start the stem cell research uh, where they're going to know exactly where to inject um, my, uh, my cells. And, uh, and the doctor's really confident he could repair everything. So I'm looking forward to that because I, you, I, you hear it all the time. Yeah. Just worn out from my shoulder. It, it just, I want, it's been bad for, for like five years. Um, essentially my whole time in WWE and it was probably, it was from that first surgery. It just never bounced back. And I had a lot of scar tissue in there. And so, and I've worked through it and I've always, and I always did. My dad goes, he goes, it's all those goddamn power moves you did on TV. <laughs> Does he say that <laughs> today? Yeah. He, he was like, you still pressing guys over your head? I go, no, dad, not anymore. Uh, Roger. I said, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. And then he goes, he goes, well, you know, you look good right now. You look healthy. He's like, you're not as thick as you were. And I go, wait, what? <laughs> and like, then he insults me. And uh, I go, what do you mean? I go, I'm 280. Well, I go, he goes, your face, everything just looks a little, you know, you look healthy. And I will go, well, the fuck? I go, I just got to work and I look great. He goes, no, you look great. But he goes, you just look a little thinner. And I was just fucking, I left oh, hot. Oh, boy. Oh, worst thing you can say to the big guy. So, no, oh, you're looking looking kind of small. Oh, thanks. Or you're looking lean. We've talked about this. How Cody came up and said you're looking lean, and that. I, yeah, I, I had my Tyson shirt on, which was a it's a trim cut shirt where it's 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 one of those shirts that make you look leaner. Like, but lean. Cody's Cody's and, like and Cody's Cody, like a compliment. I, we all know what Cody's doing. Cody's planting that seed in your head. Like, yeah. yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I already know it. John Laurinaitis was notorious for, hey, right back, you're looking a little small today. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> like, I would just like, he just he would just try to just to fucking, I like Johnny a lot. He, he was always, especially out of talent relations. He was, uh, as a producer, I really, really enjoyed him a lot more. So, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, you know, it's a good week. We got some shows coming up and, uh, I'm excited for the, the, the Feed Me More Nutrition. I'm actually, I'm doing the San Jose Fit Expo. So I got that all worked out. Uh, I have to do the application for a booth over there. And that's in San Jose at the end of July. I believe like the 29th, yes. 30th, that 28th or 29th or 29th and 30th. And uh, I actually added it to the feedmemore.com schedule. Um, that's going to be my first expo and I'm getting everything now. Uh, JD was actually helping me with the ordering the right things for the table, mm-hmm. you know, um, for pop-ups and for table space. And, uh, I'll have to, you know, um, organize a team probably, and I'll drive down for that one and, uh, and have everything set up over there. And it's just, and it's marketing to the fitness world and getting feed me more nutrition because everything's been so successful amongst the wrestling community with people, but I need to, the fitness industry is my, is where I need to go. Um, and, and raise awareness on that. And that's why Amazon is so big for me because now I'm exposed on a worldwide level to everyone with that. And we're actually, I've gotten some emails. I need to address this with the feed me more nutrition on Amazon. Um, we are, we're working out the details right now on their Amazon global so that in the UK and, and Australia and China and in Dubai and Canada, that everything will be available with their Amazon. And I got to ship out more inventory to those distributors uh, and the guy that's helping me with all that. We're, we're working all that out now because uh, it, it's just mainly that in the United States still, I thought it was going to be more um, everything was set up with the Amazon to be worldwide. It won't be until I do the uh, Amazon global. So that's all being worked out and stay tuned for the announcements on that. Um, but the shell shock fat burner, I believe we're like six or seven weeks okay. out uh, for that. And I was telling you, I'm looking forward. I'm going to actually be doing a, a summer contest uh, with a grand prize. That we haven't, I haven't figured out exactly um, the, the money amount uh, and the prizes that are going to be involved. But we're, we're looking at, it's going to be thousands of dollars. Thousands um, of dollars for, for the what? First, uh, the person who has the, the, essentially a body transformation challenge um, with Feed Me More Nutrition. Uh, and then the shell shock extreme fat burner is going to be, you know, obviously the, the big motivating factor behind that with the summer coming up mm-hmm. that, that before and after photos. And, and again, when we get closer and I have all the details ironed out on that, and we will annou- officially announce it. Uh, so if you're listening, you, you might not, you might want to hold off on leaning up right now <laughs> until shell shock extreme fat burners coming out. In fact, you might want to bulk up a little bit. Um, because, uh, 
whoever we determine to be the, the number one winner for that is going to be in store for quite the uh, cash prize and Feed Me More Nutrition uh, prize pack. So um, we're getting all the details worked out on all that. And just a way for the summer to get more exposure for the brand and, and to reward people for their hard work in supporting Feed Me More Nutrition. All right, awesome. And with that said, why don't we go ahead and take our first break right here and do a little Zevia uh, promotion, and uh, we'll be right back. Sounds good. Hey, everybody, Pat Buck here. I love soda. I really do. But the only soda I'll touch is Zevia, and I'll tell you why. While other sodas out there contain enough sugar to send you into a diabetic coma or have artificial sweeteners like aspartame and sucralose that are linked to cancer, with Zevia, you know you're getting something natural, clean, and zero calorie. Zevia is sweetened with stevia, a miracle leaf that's naturally zero calories and 200 times sweeter than sugar. Stevia has been consumed for thousands of years in the South America, and Zevia was the first zero-calorie soda on the market to use stevia instead of artificial sweeteners. They revolutionized the soda game. Not only is Zevia naturally sweetened, but their drinks contain no artificial ingredients, no artificial coloring agents, nothing fake. Plus, stop beeping at me. Plus, they're not... They're non-GMO project verified. With Zevia, you get a safe and frankly delicious soda that you and your family can enjoy guilt-free. Zevia offers 14 different flavors of soda. I like the cream soda the best. Four flavors of sparkling water, mix it with vodka, and three delicious energy drinks. I want you to try it for yourself. I really do. So here's what Zevia and I are offering for listeners of Conversation with the Big Guy free six packs if you live in the united states or canada all you have to do is go to www.zevia.com backslash podcast and sign up to get a free six pack in a couple weeks you'll get one in the mail once again that's www.zevia z-e-v-i-a.com backslash podcast where you can sign up to get your free six pack of zevia simple as that and i guarantee you'll end up loving it enjoy the show and we're back. So uh, try our friends at Zevia. They are probably one of, if not our favorite sponsor. So uh, what are you drinking tonight, Pat? Actually, I am just drinking my Polar Seltzer Raspberry Lime. And uh, I've, I will be honest, I had half of uh, my prescribed medication because I can't drink because I'm on antibiotics. <laughs> ah. So... Uh, so this isn't nearly as fun for you tonight. Now. I was literally even before me and the me and the wife normally on Thursdays have a little bit of red wine and then we drink. I drink more on the podcast, but uh, it sucks, man. It just sucks. So what are you drinking? I I'm doing Tito's with a uh, Perrier and a little splash of vitamin water zero. Okay. Uh, my Zevias are all I have. I think I have one cream soda and one ginger ale left. I had to make a stop at the old uh, Walgreens tonight to get some uh, Perrier, and because I had I had a, a couple vitamin water zeros in the fridge too, um, and because I leave tomorrow for the weekend, so I always time out my food and everything, my drinks for the week mm-hmm. to last me. But I I, I ran out of Zevias. I actually got to make another uh, another shipment unless they want a Zevia wants to ship me uh, some more uh, caffeine free colas. <laughs> well, you- I'll happily take it. Because of our great fans, too, uh, I actually bullied Zevia into following me on uh, on Twitter. <laughs> Wait, there's another guy on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, so they, exactly. So uh, I said one comment, and then I saw Zevia's following, and I wrote to them saying, you know, thank you for the support. And then they asked for my address. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get some uh, surprises in the old mail ski. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait for this show. We, we have our huge falling out, and it's just conversation with the big guy, and it's just me, and it just show just fucking sucks so bad. <laughs> just, just me and Mark for life going back and forth for for sixty minutes every week. Oh, uh, I got some Zevia advice too from Trent. Have you ever heard the the way he likes to drink his Zevia? <laughs> I I can only imagine. Like, no, please share. So Trent's rules for Zevia is that it has to be fruit flavors in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then it but after that, after the morning, go as crazy as you want. But fruit fruit <laughs> I this is, so this is fucked up, but I I actually when I have like the rainbow pack of like the strawberry and the orange, I will do those in the morning. Because I feel like that's the equivalent of like, oh, this is like orange juice in the yep. morning. Um, 
Trent Barata, very good advice. Very. I I can't can't not agree with that. So, so. yeah. So uh, so uh, speaking of um, you know our sponsors and everything, we had a survey that went up. Uh, and people on Twitter, I said I'd give you a shout out. If you did the survey, if I left you off, I apologize. Hit me up. I'll give you a shout out. Uh, T underscore Jones 53, never shuts up 07. The Red Daniels, King of Mark style, Karate Piper, Mark Cody 1209, ROBS, and Floel all on Twitter. Thank you for your support. We appreciate you listening and doing that little survey for us. Karate Piper just got me. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know why. I just... <laughs> one of those, that was actually a former student of mine. He's helpful. Uh, one of those guys actually wrote me too saying, I did the survey even though Ryback has blocked me years ago for something. So. Oh, I guarantee if he goes scroll, th- scroll through your timeline, you'll find the comment that you made. <laughs> it's, always, it's always for a reason. It's not like I just make, oh, I'm going to block this asshole today. Like I just don't, it just doesn't happen by accident. So. so if you want to, if you want me to play peacemaker, show me what you did to get blocked, and we'll we'll bring it up on the show, and we can judge. We can bring it to the old court. We'll figure out what that is. Yeah, that I, that is actually, you know what? What a great segment this is. <laughs> if you are blocked and you listen to the podcast, or you have a friend that is blocked, good chances if you you listen to the show, you know somebody. You, let's find the comment that that that. You obviously said something negative about me, and let's bring it to fruition. Let's let's talk about this on air, and we will hold a court with the big guy on on you. This could be something maybe you obviously feature mm-hmm. Pat, where you bring this, and I I am the judge, the jury, and the executioner, and I determine that fucking marks. Fate. Okay, and uh, whether I because I don't unblock anybody, I'm very strict on this, but we will have a special occasion for this podcast. Where if you could send in the comment that got you blocked, and uh, and Pat could br- present it to the judge, mm-hmm. and uh, we will have our own court with the big guy. Okay, like yeah, that. I'll be the representation, and and if it goes through, you will unblock them. But if not, you know, we'll find them guilt. We need a gavel sound. We need like a good fucking Eddie has to put a gavel yeah. sound. <laughs> I'll get that judge's hammer. I had it smoky bones. They got me fired. Uh, <laughs> the old penis, penis. <laughs> the judge's hammer. Uh, uh, no, but with that, and you are actually, you will be their their representation, yep. and your goal is to get them unblocked. And uh, that what a fucking amazing thing that just happened right here I, live on Conversation with the Big Naturally, Guy. I'll be their cousin Vinny, and I will try to get them uh, we, off the hook. We will... We will never run out of uh, run out of these either because there are millions of people blocked on my account. I'm Next sure. episode will be nine hours long of just <laughs> just <laughs> shitty comment after shitty comment. It's, that's going to be an entire episode, though. I have a feeling just court with the big guy. <laughs> I told you, I really want to. I I really want to start coming up with better titles for our show. Uh, and we talked about just clickbaiting people and getting people like just one week. It's just penis size or like. Just something really ridiculous. We're like, well, I want to click on this. And like, what we make no mention of it. And it's just gotcha. And it's funny you mentioned that too, because like a lot of the reviews, especially the ones that have been coming through um, on iTunes, which I check out every week, and uh, we see all the ones. I apologize if I don't read all of them, but a lot of them lately go, you know, I came into this podcast having no expectations or, you know, the the internet way they, they kind of portray you. And then it's always, I expected this, but I got this. So, yeah, uh, that was the coolest thing on the WrestleCon, the, the feedback we get from the podcast. I, to me, that's the most rewarding. And this was part of the reason for doing this, too, is rebuilding my brand and controlling the perception of me. It was like, oh, you guys, I'll show you guys exactly who and what I am. And if you tune into the podcast, you'll see that. Mm-hmm. So. And there's a serious side to me that I'm very intense at times. And but you know I'm not just I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> like that's not me 24 seven. So so let's let only when the red light are on for WWE cameras. <laughs> let's get to our our uh, reviews. Uh, we got two this week that stood out to me. Um, for, all right. And the comments is "Let's Go Rangers" by "Let's Go Rangers." Go figure. One mark at a time, indeed. I'm not doing this for free supplement. I just want to say that I actually don't groan when I wake up early Monday morning knowing I have CWBG to look forward to and at work. The reason I listen to this podcast is I truly appreciate the honesty, and I think that is something that the rest of the world needs more of 
Uh, Ryback just tells it like it is, unlike most other people who speak in riddles because they're afraid of offending someone. Ryback is someone I could see myself being very good friends with. He actually reminds me of one of my good friends uh, to the T now that I think about it. Definitely a must-listen podcast, even if you aren't a wrestling fan, because Ryback, excellent tips on how to live a clean and healthy lifestyle. Very complimentary, not a lot of humor, but... No, I that was uh I really 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 like that review. That's um thank you very much. The second one is from I am the Justin and the the headline says big guy stares at his phone during cons. The t- Oh yeah. The title is misleading. I saw the big guy WrestleCon on Saturday morning and he was dealing with his phone while waiting for people to come. I thought, "Man, this would be a great time to come up with some story about how I pretend that's all he did." But this is all I could come up with. I just didn't want to bother you. And despite what con that's what cons are for, it just still feels awkward to me as was my first time at one and I couldn't afford to purchase your time. Uh, I'm not saying you're out of normal price range. I'm just living on a tight wallet and I got to participate in all the festivities last weekend with a, for free with a friend and I, I and wasn't super interested in getting signatures from you or Mr. Barrett. So I just walked past and decided to snap a few photos from afar, which I didn't wind up doing because, well, that's weird. So I decided to get on here, write nonsense, and say I can't wait for the fat burner to come out. I'm about the same size as Kevin Owenstein, but three inches taller. I love the podcast. You guys are great. So, Well, I will say... It- you are allowed, and, and a lot of people did just come over and say hello and shake our hand, uh, which is, we're not there. You're, like, it's not like it's, it, is, it is $50 to come into this area. Yeah. Like, it, you're allowed to come over, and, and if you want to come over, and then if you want to purchase something or, or get a photo, you, then you know, obviously, you know, it, it's, it's like it is at every convention or signing. So. But, you're, but thank you very much. You're, but you are allowed to come and say hello. And uh, hopefully, you know, next time, you know, everything is going even better for you. And you can get a couple pictures if you want of, of people that you like. Mm-hmm. And But yeah, I'm going to oh, go ahead. Sorry. And, and shout out to uh, Mr. Kevin Keenan, who has a podcast of his own. And Dave Destruction Sturcio, who helped us out greatly at WrestleCon. Yeah. No, thank you guys very much. And I didn't know Keenan has a podcast now. He, I know I talked to him about it a while back. He went back to school. He's in communications. For those that don't know, he's a ref, uh, I believe... I don't know. Was he Kevin Keen in WWE or or Kevin Quinn? I forget when he was a referee. But uh, I always knew him as Kevin Keenan. So I, I mean, he's I I never knew him as Kevin Quinn. So, he's more. You never know. He's more famous for his run with the Hardys as the licensed official of all the Hardy stuff for yeah. uh, for Impact when he was uh, doing that. But he's he's a real brain and a a real smart dude and very passionate about wrestling. Nice, yeah. Loves wrestling and a good human being. So um, thank you to you guys out there and, and Big Dave for helping as always. Um, I'm going to go with uh, number one this week. So uh, what was his name? Uh, his name on there just says, Let's Go Rangers. So congratulations. Yep. Let's Go Rangers. Uh, he's, you know, Let's- on top of that, I can actually interfere here because he's probably a New York guy if he's a Rangers fan, unless it's a Texas Ranger. So if you want to come to a WrestlePro show, tickets are on me, pal, but no front row. <laughs> and uh, email me at the big guy at feedmemore.com and uh, your supplement of choice um, along with a free Feed Me More Nutrition Shaker bottle. And I'll throw an El Pollo Loco gift card in there if uh, there's an El Pollo Loco in your area. And just uh, message me um, with all your details and uh, we'll get the supplements out to you there. Thank you very much. Okay. So where do we go from here, man? Um, a lot has happened in wrestling. We had WrestleMania. We had some stuff this week. I don't know where you want to start first. I would like to. I want to do our WrestleMania review because I watched the entire show from start to finish, from the first kickoff to the last to the last main everything. event. Everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, everything with my free WWE Network subscription <laughs> um, that they will not fucking cancel. Um, in which I'm actually. You know, it is what it is. Um, but before we get into that, I would like to go ahead and uh, every week, you know, with the exception of last week where we were kind of a little more on the fly and um, we weren't able to prepare quite so much last week, um, give my tips of the week. Okay. Um, before we get into the wrestling stuff, um, because, you know, we are, this is 
a, a wrestling podcast to a certain degree and a big degree. And I am a wrestler and you're a wrestler. So, uh, but with that being said, uh, the workout tip of the week is don't be on your phone while in the middle of a set. Focus while you are lifting. And what I mean by that, because I don't give a shit if you have your phone out in the gym and I've been, I do social media stuff mm-hmm. in between sets and like, because I maximize my time in there and I've heard people before, they're like, well, people are they have their phones in the gym and like, you don't know what they're doing. They could be reading a book for all we know. Like, so it, it's just maximizing your time at times. Most of the time it's people bullshitting, you know, but I've actually sit out seen what I'm talking about here. As I see a lot of people doing single arm movements now, like, so they'll be on a, on a, on a bicep curl and rather than doing both arms, they'll be doing one arm and looking on their phone on the other. Okay. And, uh, so that's what I'm referring to. Don't be on your phone while you're actually in the middle of, of the set, like actually focus on what you're doing and maximize each rep. Um, and it's, it's a little thing, but it's a big thing. And, uh, you're never going to be goddamn champion of the world doing that right. on your phone in between whole other issue. And, and I'm not going to even give an opinion on that because you never know what anyone's looking at, but while you're actually working out, I, it's just my personal opinion. You're not getting the most out of each set if you're doing that. So knock that shit off. Uh, nutrition tip of the week when eating chicken wings, cause I've been eating a lot of chicken wings on this keto diet because I need the fats. Be cautious of sauces like barbecue and teriyaki. They contain high sugar and carbs, and you do not want to be mixing your fat with your carbs. Barbecue sauce teriyaki, guys, is loaded with sugars and carbohydrates. Really? I'm talking teriyaki. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, it, it tons just of broke it. my heart. God you, damn it! If you you are you are doing the worst thing to yourself. If you that, but stick with the mild, the medium, the hot sauces. The buffalo sauces, you're always good to go on. Garlic parmesan, I'm not sure about, but I do know it's less than barbecue and teriyaki. Um, I I, want to say I feel like garlic parmesan is very low carbs also, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that, and I actually got to look into that. Um, Or if anybody out there wants to look into it and tweet the Ryback22 on Twitter, the the profile of the uh, sauce for the garlic parmesan. But... Avoid that stuff, guy. Barbecue and teriyaki for sure, guys. Um, lots of carbs and sugars in those. Uh, book of the week this week is "You Don't Have to Be a Shark" uh, by Robert Herjavec. Herjavec or Herjavec or um, it's the guy from Shark Tank, though. Uh, the nice yeah, guy yeah from Shark Tank. Hair. He was one. Him and Mark Cuban are my two guys on that show. That I, I really I like Damon John too. I like all yeah. of them. Let's be honest. Uh, but I I kind of. Uh, they they come across as uh as as genuine people um on that show and I and I checked out his book this week and I really 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 enjoyed it. I got that on Audible and I believe do we have an Audible plug? Audibletrial.com backslash big guy, sign up, get your free trial, and it gives us a little moolah to keep the show going. Yep, and you can get Wake Up It's Feeding Time on there, the motivational book book, uh, book by the big guy, um, if you want to use that code and get a free book. Um and quote of the week this week is uh, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them uh, without doing anything. And that is by Albert Einstein. And uh, I saw that this week, and I was like, you know what, that's, that's a great quote, and uh, I'm throwing it out there. So uh, with that being said, uh, what do you think of WrestleMania? Um, I do think that it was one of the more well-built WrestleManias. I mean, I think there's obviously going to be fundamental problems with like the fact that it, You know, it kind of sucks that post-WrestleMania, dare I say, six matches on that card have people in it that won't be around for a while. So it's kind of like, you know, being a part of wrestling and seeing that kind of sucks for the, you know, full-time guys. But I thought it was overall pretty good. I mean, you? I I loved it. I loved it. Yeah? I I thought thought they had, and I will always praise them when they do something good and they... uh, I very rarely com- will complain about like I'm not I don't as far as the shows mm-hmm. you know and, and whatnot like it's I thought they had something for everybody on that show and, and they should have it was long enough yeah. it was you know seven hours long or six and a half hours but I I, I watched and I was doing other things during different points um, but they in, in, in to your to what you were talking about was um, six of the guys not having anything to do with it you know. Uh, moving forward or for a while yeah it's always been 
WrestleMania is kind of just a whole other show compared to the rest of the and year. And it's always it's always like, been that way, you know. It's <laughs> always been like outside yeah. stuff. I get that, but it's just like it sucks as a performer when you're there and you kill yourself all year and you end up in the battle royal mm-hmm. as like and, and then you just you can see you'll see like other guys will make their debuts there now and things like that. Well, that used to not be like so common. It, it, I, it sucks from a standpoint. Like a guy like Dolph Ziggler. You, he does media work for the company. He busts his ass, and he he's always involved. Mm-hmm. And like he can go out and work with anybody from top to bottom, and he can make the worst of worst guys look amazing. And he can make himself look great. He knows how to get himself over. And and like I was watching, I was like when I saw him, and I was like, man, that feels wrong. And it is wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like you should make you should make a spot for a guy like that who you're paying a lot of money to, and like you should you should make him you should reward him. Rather, you know, in guys like that. But uh, other than that, I, I really, the only thing, and I'm not going to, I don't, like, the only thing I don't understand is, is Mojo with the Battle Royal. Okay. Um, and that's my only thing. And it's not, Mojo's a super nice guy and it's nothing like that. But and I know that they, they, they wanted Gronkowski for a while to do something um, with them and they got that out of that. So it's like, it's just, it is what it is. It, but that's the only thing, like, you know, is that guy going to go out there and, and have main event matches? Or, like, you, no. you could invest that battle royal into somebody who you're going to do something more with. So, uh, but, and, and that's not like a knock on Mojo. It's just that it is what it is, you know. I, and that's the only, that was the only thing just watching from being figured in there and, and knowing. I was just like, ah, come on. But other than that, I because I, I usually won't give a shit about whatever you're going to do and whatnot. That, that just, uh, that didn't feel I'm curi- right. And to, uh, no, ahead, I'm sorry. curious to see because I mean, I, I, and this is, I've never met the man before, but like, you know, it, it really does feel like they, I wonder what they do from here because they got what they were going for. I mean, if they mention any more times that he's friends with Gronkowski, who looked like he was, and I would hate that, by the way, if I was a performer, if that was like my big thing. Oh, Ryback friends with so and so, like I would be like, holy shit, what am I doing wrong? Okay, like yeah, yeah, that's like I just think it, I think that's like if that's the main focus. What the fuck do I need to improve on right now so that the main focus isn't who my friend is? And I think that that and that's they they just the facts. they got their investment back with they were always hoping Gronk would be a part of it, but they're always late. You know what it sucks? Wrestling's always late to the party, especially WWE, where like like Gronk is one of the best tight ends uh, in the NFL. And I'm sure he'll have a great year this year. I mean, he, this year he didn't do so much. He had a lot of injuries going on, stuff like that. The year beforehand, he was the guy, maybe the number one, he definitely the best tight end in the league. Um, He's awesome. But it's also like, I feel like they're just so late to the party on things. They always always are. are. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. um, And uh, I mean, they, they got what they were going for. And I don't think, you know, I don't think it's going to go any higher than that. Like he's got his thing. You got Gronkowski in there. Now where does it go? But yeah, I thought the best. Which, by the way, that I was going to ask you because I it always amazes me because uh, WWE has always had a fascination with football players. Mm-hmm. Even though I feel like Vincent Hunter, like I feel like Kevin, I feel like none of them are like huge football of fans. Not. But. No, but they are obsessed with football players. It's <laughs> a good it's, point. Yeah, you look throughout the. It, no, this is a real thing. Look throughout the history of wrestling, from fucking Bam Bam Bigelow and Lawrence Taylor. Like they have been obsessed with pro wrestler mm-hmm. uh, football yeah. players. And you look at it, you're like, why the fuck are you obsessed with these guys? Because very few of them have like turned out like. You put a football player in a wrestling ring, and it is fucking just like they are so out of their element. And I don't like Gronkowski is, is it, the top of the fucking. You know he is a premium tight end in the NFL, mm-hmm. and like, but you watched him get in the ring, and his like tank top was like kind of like coming up, and he looked he looked so out of place to me mm-hmm. because he's not a pro wrestler, and he's not, and he's probably had zero training, and like he's just having fun. He's probably fucking shit faced. And like, but I was just watching that, but like, oh my God, could he, he looked so unnatural just in a ring, like getting, like it was so forced and I, I get it. It's a cool, it's good for them business wise to do that because it gets a mainstream publicity, mm-hmm. which is 100% why they yeah. do it. And I totally understand. And I, I get it. And I, and I'm 
it, it makes sense. But like they've had this obsession with football players. Like I guarantee you now they're they're thinking, can we get Gronkowski for a match? Yep. And like like that's that's one hundred percent has been discussed. I feel like like God damn it, Paul, can we get him in some tights? <laughs> oh, I bet he looked great in a black pair of tights. Oh. I agree. I mean, and all the times too, we'd always like, I, I'd love to know the amount of money invested into, dare I say, you know, failed football players that have been hired, you know, through the developmental system that haven't panned out because it's a yeah. totally different beast. Um, hundreds. Hundreds, of them, yeah. Of, of gone, and like, and if you look at the successful ones, I would say The Rock who but who came who came from a wrestling family and then Goldberg obviously played football and had and had major success. Mongo McMichael, um, but Mongo McMichael's is another one who who but again was not he was never one of you know I we loved watching Mongo matches yeah. from back in the day but he was never. Uh, he was never one of the premier athletes in the in the squared circle. Yeah. I would say. Speak for yourself. I don't know. <laughs> he's a, he's a hero. I, I'd, I've seen him live in Vegas, Halloween Havoc. Him and Goldberg for the ring. By the way, I was there for wow. that. I've seen. A, yeah, I actually I was there for that. I went to all the Halloween Havocs as a kid, and uh, at the MGM Grand, mm-hmm. I remember always watching the uh, the wrestlers would always walk through by the food court too before you go into the arena. And uh, I always, it was like, I remember Buff Bagwell and Disco, like, walking, something for the crowd. It was, like, crowd interaction stuff, like, where Bischoff probably sent him up to go, like, just mingle with the crowd before the pay-per-view and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I always, I have memories. But I remember the Goldberg-Sid match where Sid was bleeding like crazy at Halloween Havoc. It was like a street fight, I think. Or Sid was wearing jeans, I think. And uh, I was always a big, huge Sid fan. I loved Sid as a kid, um, who was one of the more... I always thought he was as over as anybody in his prime. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Sid probably wants to kill me. I was saying that he. Uh, oh, if yeah. I, I was sorry. saying, I always forget about. I was this. like, if Sid's, I'm like, just be prepared. If you see me fighting, it's either going to be Sabu or it's going to be Sid. And Sabu's table is right next to us, but he's so fucking pilled up, he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. So <laughs> I don't give a shit. He he probably would have came up to me and been like, I know his gimmick, his routine. He'd be like. Uh, do I know you? Do I know? And I'd be like, yeah, you fucking know me. He's like, oh, and then we'd probably just laugh about it because we have issues too. I don't think I've ever met. I've never met. Uh, you're not, you're not um, missing much. But, uh, <laughs> Sid, I did a signing with Sid though. Uh, at Queens, the big event. Yeah. He was right next to me. We had a good discussion and, uh, he was very complimentary towards a lot of things. And, uh, and it was like, man, me and Kalen Croft, Chris Cage, uh, Kalen Croft of the dude busters were always like skip Sheffield was always a huge, Fucking Sid fan. I Skip Sheffield actually had the body armor. Or, no uh, body pads glove. and elbow pads. Body glove. Body glove. Sorry. Yeah, I should know that. Body glove. Sorry. And I was really mad because the body glove logo wore off after a few weeks, and I was like, I had to order new ones because I needed the body glove logo to show. I re- I remember like, oh man, that's real Mark shit. Like I used to get the Bret Hart bike elbow and knee pads <laughs> just because Bret wore them. Man, that's some shit. I wear, yeah, I wear the trace ones now, but I think they quit making the, the elbow and knee pads. I bought, I bought everything from high spots years ago. I just said, send me everything you got. Hmm. And they just shipped everything to me and I paid them. And like, so I had all of the different colors and stuff, but like, cause I love the trace stuff. And I actually today went and got the, we talked about last week, I was wearing those thick, heavy lifting knee pads that were blowing up my legs. I finally got the thinner ones at Walgreens. Okay to wear underneath my trace knee pad. So I'm looking forward to being about five pounds lighter in the mm-hmm. ring because <laughs> those big, thick knee pads for heavy squatting or they were fucking, I've worn those for so long, but they just, they, they constrict the blood flow in your legs so bad. So I want to bring it back around to the, but, uh, the battle Royal. You know, what stood out to me that I thought was odd and I don't want to say it's a bad thing, but it, it made you like, I watch everything. So I watch NXT and I'm familiar with it. I believe big Damo was in the, in the ring. Do you remember a guy being okay. like, the guy that really just kind of blended in the background because he's never been, he's not on the roster. Like he was a very hairy guy with long hair, looked kind of like a Bray. Yeah. They were well, they, the only way I knew who they, the commentators constantly were putting him over. They were put him. His name is like Killian something, but that I, I found really peculiar okay. because he, he went there near the ends. And I just thought that was an interesting place to, to put him. Um, 
especially because he's not really a focal point of what NXT is doing now. But it's like, hey, I just, like that's an okay thing, but it was just so random. I was like wondering why does that happen? But uh, so that that could be as simple as they want to see if this guy is worth investing in, and they'll throw him in a in the kickoff battle royal, a match that you know they they don't. It, from a creative standpoint, it really they don't give a shit about. Um, it's just a way to get everybody on the card, um, you know. So they they will they might want to see how he does on the big stage, how he looks in a WWE ring. Okay, because some guys that they there's there was a reason why he was in it. If they're putting him and then leaving him in there for a significant amount of time, and then featuring him a little bit mm-hmm. at the end, and like it would be let's let's just see how he performs and how he looks on our in our environment on our biggest stage because he might be a guy where they're on the fence about where they don't know oh is he just another fat guy does he have good stamina like let's see what he has and like and so that out of that is kind of maybe something that could be one possible reason why they did it you know i i don't know him maybe he bust his ass yeah no and, he's and good just, he's that, very that, good like, and i've seen his independent stuff he was great Okay, so and he could just be a guy that like, and he busts his ass down there, and he works harder than anybody. And they were like, you know what? This is your reward. We're going to throw you on the NXT Battle Royal, give you a payday, sure. and like, makes sense. So like, yeah, I don't, I don't know because I'm not there. So those are just a couple scenarios. Also, uh, okay, so we had that, and I'll go, I'll go through. I don't know if that kicked it off. I think Aries and Neville kicked it off. I think Neville, awesome match, was on yeah. Fire, they, man. they went out. Yeah. Neville, I'm happy for him. Uh He's such a great guy, and I, I remember really early on, um, without saying too much about anything, but he, I could tell he wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things I remember that happened was uh, if the, the, for the Slammy Awards, I believe he won uh, Rookie of the Year or Newcomer of the yeah. Year. And they did nothing with it. And, like, and that was supposedly a real vote, and that's who the people voted for. And then rather than them using that momentum to catapult him into a, into a better mm-hmm. role, I think he lost that night on, on raw and like nothing just in like in that it's just like, you're clearly not listening to the fans. Yeah. And that's, I think he realized it sooner than most guys usually do mm-hmm. up there. And I remember working him and, uh, when I was kind of between on the fence of baby face heel and, um, we had a couple matches and, I just remember like, man, I've never seen anybody so quickly up here realize when you like realize like what it really is. And like, and he looks phenomenal. He busts his ass in the gym and he's an amazing worker and can do anything. And so I'm happy that he's having an opportunity. And I think it, it, it's, it's not shocking to me that he's, he's fucking hitting a home run with it because he could have done this two years ago for yeah, me. So it's, it's great. It's nice to see him. He's a real heel, like really does, you know, um, the, that's a moment where, where where real anger is coming through it the is. camera, I think. It is. And yeah. it's definitely helping him. The one thing I disagree with, and it's not his call at all, but I wish they got rid of it completely in wrestling. There's too many fucking, the word king. Like, I think it's the most overused, you know, Hunter's king of kings. There's always a king. Thing. I, I was going to disagree. I think that and big are the two words. Um Everybody, uh, big show, big guy, big E, big cast. Okay, yeah. Everybody's right. using everybody's using big now. Um, also, mm-hmm. so and, and there's probably something we're forgetting. But I feel like the king and big are the two overused things. And there could be there could be different ways to do that. They could like any sort of title or something. It just I don't know. Like I get he's king of the cruiserweights, but like they could have called him anything. Be nice to have a little bit more creativity. You know, I don't know. That's not his call, obviously. It's, pro- it's probably because he's Wade was uh, King Barrett, and he's English, and Neville's English, and God damn it, he's a king! <laughs> like it's just probably is that. It just it's simple. I'm, I'm not, it's that's really how things work. One other one question <laughs> I had: I love their little catchy theme song for WrestleMania. I really kind of like Greenlight, uh, but why do they always go back to like Pitbull and Flo Rida? Is there a story to that? Do you know anything about that or not? I feel like Vince is like as a closet rat fan. And just like, those two I guys, feel like Vin- just Flo Rida. That's like the only person. I, no, but like Wiz Khalifa, they always yeah. have on for things. And like, I think Vince or Kevin Dunn are like legit hardcore rap fans. And like, I feel like like fucking Kevin Dunn and Vince probably hung with Biggie and Tupac back in the day. <laughs> and like, 
had fucking secret fucking meetings and like love to party and do coke and weed and like I feel like there's something with Vince. Our truth is one of Vince's favorite people who again, a rapper. And like I feel like God damn it, truth, give me a rap. <laughs> like I feel like he's really just fucking He's down. He's down. And my know? new favorite Twitter account is Vince Googling. Cranky Vince has gone away. Oh, but yes. Vince Googling. Go check out. You will thank me. You know, I thank you right now. I did it last <laughs> week and it's already. I thoroughly enjoy when I see Vince Googling pop up on my timeline. And uh, like, I don't look at my timeline. I follow a lot of people to be more interactive with my fans mm. now. But like, I, I, I have to search for his and find like, it's, it's so worth so it. So worth it. Do thrill do yeah. thrill rides usually last seven hours? <laughs> do all do all Japanese wrestlers come out with a violin player? <laughs> oh, There's one so where good. he's looking at Shin. Uh, I was mess. I don't know if it's Shin, Shinzake, Shinzuke, whatever Nakamura. Obviously, I know who the fuck he is, and he's looking at a picture of him. And he, <laughs> when does he blow the green mist? <laughs> <laughs> just to go check out that account trust me it's fucking amazing oh no i thank you for recommending it it is uh it's 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 worth following it'll be it'll be shut down eventually i wonder did they ever find out who was behind cranky no Vince? but i wanted to it's funny that was the one question because we planned uh you and i had, did at least we were supposed to go with swaggle last week when we were recording the podcast we were going to go to the bruce pritchard show and then we, we ended yeah. up doing our own, and we all just got really drunk, and I had to catch a flight. Uh, yeah, just in my in my hotel, and we literally just, that was it. That was, that the was night. just reminiscing and coming up with uh, independent gimmick ideas, which I don't know if that's worth talking about. The Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, we'll save that. that. That's, yeah, we'll save it in case it does happen. The fat indie guys will wait for another day. Fat indie boys. Fat indie, fat indie boys with a Z. Um, so the pre-show, uh, I don't remember what else. I think Dean was on it. Oh, Am- Ambrose and uh, Corbin. I hear a lot of. Po- <laughs> I hear nothing but positive things from people that work with him. That say Corbin's a really hard worker. No issues. Cool with everybody. Like really tries for him being an outside guy. You know, being a football player. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's another guy that's a football player. Yeah. He uh I have never I've uh, I've met him. Always got along with him in any interactions I've had. Uh I've never wrestled him or anything. But I, I he works like he should work. Yeah. He I feel like he gets it. Like so yeah. And uh he's not gonna I, I think he works that methodical pace, but he does everything he does really good. Mm-hmm. And uh I felt bad for that. I just was like the Intercontinental Championship on the pre-show. Yeah. And, but uh, that obviously, uh, because I guess the Divas had some sort of issue with uh, the SmackDown. Was, they were supposed to be on the pre-show, supposedly, right? And then it got, people complained and they freaked out and put them back on the show. Which, it was a good moment, Naomi winning it, right? Yeah, that was a great moment. Just for her, just because Naomi is such a great, if like, if anyone that like, Naomi is like, a super, super amazing human mm-hmm. being. And uh, it, it was, I'm really happy from her because she was in developmental when I was at FCW and she came in as an outsider yeah. and uh, she, she works super hard and it's always what you do when you get and there. She, and she, on top of that, when I, when I came down there with you, cause, and I said some past episodes, I was trying to get into the system and at that, it wasn't like OVW where I trained with you guys. No outsiders were allowed to, except for, a couple people got in, but they wouldn't let me in. So I went to their beginner program and then I ended up helping teach the beginner program with Norman and Kern. Yeah. And, uh, but Naomi would always come down there almost every single day to work, you know, to go practice. And then, um, after practicing with the class earlier in the day. Right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, she, yeah. she was always a good egg. <clears throat> um, so then we got the regular show, AJ and Shane, which was, you know, Hey, I saw parts of that. I was I didn't watch all of that one in detail. I will go back and watch that. I saw parts of it though, and it seemed everything seemed really good from what I saw. Um, Shane always busts his ass, and AJ's great, so he's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, like it's if so, Shane wants to wrestle once a enough. year. I think he has that right. You know, just to... he why yeah, it's their company. He can do whatever like, and he's 
Vince McMahon's son, so I get it. Like, and he, but he, uh, he train. He's a, he's like a psycho, like Vince when training. Like he's, but he's more evolved than Vince. Whereas, so here's the perfect analogy I can, or a way I can explain Vince and mm-hmm. Shane. Like Shane, obviously, co- Shane comes off a lot more normal, and I really enjoyed every encounter with Shane that I've ever had. Um, and he's probably my only hope if I'm ever going to go back and <laughs> if he takes over the company. The, uh, but he, I feel like, understands like today's like. MMA and like in, in mixed martial arts and just training and like he understands conditioning and cardio whereas like Vince is that old school steroid bodybuilder like no cardio just <laughs> no cardio but looks like a million bucks and but can intimidate you a little bit and like but when you know the gas starts wearing out like you know blowing up and where Shane is like that psycho though for like training wise like but with conditioning Mm -hmm. he gets it like he's evolved with the times where like vince is just fucking downing ico pro and fucking shooting up (laughs) and like doing heavy fucking bicep curls shane is just like and shane's not physically shane fuck steroids dad like he just busts his ass he doesn't look like vince Mm -hmm. as far as like being but like he's he's fucking a real like he's an athlete and like yeah that's just my that's how like i perceive it looking at it from how i meet them like, Vince's like, yeah, Dad, I'm going to go to the school and work on some MMA tonight. And God damn it, I'll be in the gym popping iron. <laughs> <laughs> but Vince is like ashamed. Vince is ashamed of Shane because Shane went to MMA school and didn't want to go do bicep curls with Dad. <laughs> so that's, my, that's Shane and Vince. And, and that's why they argue and get along. And like Shane, like, Dad, you got to catch up with the times, you know. There's this, there's boxing and kickboxing and Muay Thai and jiu-jitsu. And God Damn it, just give me a fucking back row. <laughs> I don't think that's far off, man. I, I, I... No, I think that's, I think that is, I'm, I'm not, I don't make things up to make them up. I think that's really, and like, you know, and then finally, God damn it, Shane, you're fired. Get out of here. And like, Shane, well, fine, I'll go start up my own company, dad, and do my MMA. Like, it's just like, that's, I feel like there's something in that, you know. Oh, man. And Ico Pro's involved somehow with all this. The next match is uh, Jericho and Owens, which, I mean, we don't want to, like, review stuff. Everything was great. Everyone brings their A-game. A game, a game and, um, you know, Jericho's good. I had a fan actually question me on that match and said, like, they, were, they thought that, that the match was not as good as they thought it was going to be. Um, but they, I, thought, I thought everything was yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean. And, like... I really liked the uh, the counter out of the cannonball in the corner yes. into the walls. I thought that was really – it's hard to be innovative this day and sure. age. Everything's been like – it really is. So I, I thought that – and I thought that was impressive to do that because Kevin's no small guy. And for Chris to be able to do that and like just positioning-wise, and they they had a great they had a great story in place. Yeah. So – but I, I, I will say it's always funny how you'll see – Kevin's had a rough few weeks from after he lost the mm-hmm. title. You'll see how Hunter and them, they protect the guys that they want to protect by they'll throw the title back on them mm-hmm. where, you know what I mean? And, and like, they'll start heating them up again. They, they save them from going. Whereas most guys, they like, if you're not in that circle, you'll fall faster. Sure. Like you can go like Miz can go from being world champion to just being, you know, losing to everybody all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's where they, they're, they, they, it's it's just weird knowing what I know, and it, you could watch and just see how they do that. But but Ko, like yeah, I liked everything. I I liked everything on the show. Yeah, I don't want to get into you know I don't know. I'll just mention things quickly. But like uh, you know, Bailey retained her title. Uh, okay. You know the the Hardys thing was pretty off the wall. That was like a tremendous moment. I I miss that because so that was a match I chose to go get my Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh boy. Um, I put an order in and I was waiting because the order, it took a little longer. Um, and I was waiting to like, and they were, I was like, I, my thought is because Buffalo Wild Wings is five minutes down the road from my mm-hmm. house. Um, so when they started doing the entrances, I was like, oh, they're going to have at least all these tag entrances. There's, I have a chance to run there and I can get back and, and see the majority of the match. Well, I got there. I had to wait a little bit for my wings. They still weren't ready. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got back, I was. I saw them. I saw the whole ending, and then. Uh, but I've seen it since. I went and watched it back because I know Matt and Jeff from working with them on the independents and stuff. You'll be with them Matt this weekend too. It's one of their last. Yeah. Dances. Which should help out the attendance at the oh, show. Sure. I would imagine. Yeah. 
they're gonna ha- they're gonna have a hell of a line the uh, now. But I'm happy for them that they were able to. It, obviously, they chose to do that, so I would imagine they had they had a favorable contract and things went their way. Um, I would imagine mm-hmm. for them to go back. So, but uh, it's interesting. I don't think he's gonna be doing the the broken character. Um, it didn't look that way anyways. As fans do the delete, that's, but I think they, they have an opportunity and, and here's the way WWE thinks people will kind of get pissed off. I'm like, God damn it. They, you know, well, they were re- really, really one of the most successful tag teams ever as the Hardy boys, um, bring them back in that role. They could always redo everything on WWE mm-hmm. their way. If you think about it, I think it. they've done a, a really good job with, they almost, the way it came across and now, I mean, he's still, he's. He's Matt Hardy the way he was when he left, and he just still does. He'll do the delete things, and like people are more accepting. Like, okay, like the real life story. He went there. Matt got himself, you know, surpassed Jeff or caught up to Jeff's years of kind of being ahead of him. And now they go back, yeah. and everyone's like, okay, this is cool. We'll still chant delete. He'll still give us the finger thing. We can can roll along, and it it's not hurting anybody. It's it's really yep. awesome to watch. You know. Cool, cool moment. It, it was a great moment. You know, for two great people, to, I think, really don't understand how, ge- you know, genuinely awesome those two guys are, man. They're just the fucking best. Yeah, I have nothing but positive things to say about them. I've just two great guys. Um, what else we got here? So that was the four-way thing. Cena, Nikki Bella, Ms. Maurice. Uh, Ms. What about that? That was, uh, yeah, with uh, Cena proposing on that at the end there. Yeah. Which was uh, I I I was anticipating that happening. I felt like that was because they've talked about it recently and stuff. So and they're both taking like, time off apparently. Yeah, uh, and that like I, it's funny because people I have my opinion on John from my time wrestling there, and I always you know what always bothers me, and we talked about this with like people writing the reviews on me and and whatnot who don't know me, and if you remember, I always I I actually saw a thing. There was an article where it said, like I said, well, Cena was a horrible wrestler. And I never once no. said that. I said I actually enjoy. I said the complete opposite, that I actually enjoyed wrestling mm-hmm. John and that I thought he was a great wrestler. And my my stuff was on him as a person in his dealings with me professionally. And like it's just amazing how people will take things and turn it completely ass backwards. And, you know, I'm happy for them as a couple and from a, a human being standpoint that they are moving on to that chapter of their lives. And congratulations to John and Nikki uh, on that from from a human being standpoint yeah. on all that. So I thought it was cool that he got to have that opportunity to do that there. I, I felt like, and I don't know, that could have been set up, but it, it, it came off. The commentators really didn't say anything. It came off as a John moment for John. It's so always nice to see that Good stuff, for him. Yeah. That, that, was, that was, I feel like that was a John moment. That's why it wasn't like, um, it wasn't, I felt like the commentators kind of stayed out mm-hmm. of that as much as they could. So, you know, I, I get it. It was cool. And I think uh, just the, the way The Miz has been portraying everything lately, uh, the best heel in WWE, it should be nothing. Absolutely. You know, people really credit those reactions and stuff. He should really climb the card. I mean, there's no, all all the stuff he's been producing lately, he, you know, he's always been, you know, it goes hot, cold, hot, cold. But for him, I mean, he's on the stuff he's doing. He's on fire right now as a heel. I think. You know what I told Miz, and I told him this. He's. I agree one hundred percent. He's always and he always busts his ass. Um, he. I told him last year, right before I left, we because me and him we've come up together. I told him I go. His biggest knock that people always knock him for is that he's not a tough guy, um, even though he's never been injured. Like he's never yeah, missed time. True. Like he's, he's. If you look at all the guy, he's he's not he's not gonna he's not the strongest guy. He's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy. But he is fucking consistent, mm-hmm. and he knows how to cut a promo. Yep. I told him, I go, I go. You should go, and I go. You should go learn jujitsu or a fighting skill. And I go, you get really fucking good at it. And I said, can you imagine if you got a black belt in jujitsu? I go, how bad are people going to really hate you now? <laughs> I go, that you, you actually, the one knock on you is you're not a tough guy. And then you go, and, the, and then now, now you have some credibility. Mm. I, go, I, go, I go, Miz, I go, I don't know what it is. And I go, even you being a blue belt in jiu-jitsu and you bragging about it like you're a black belt, 
makes me hate you fucking more that you had because he's the kind of guy that would go yeah. do that. I, if, if he had the tie, and I, I'm telling you, it would take his character to a whole new level that he, that in, and he goes and he wins one jiu-jitsu tournament against a bunch, a bunch of schmucks <laughs> or something, and, and he fucking, it's like he's a black belt. Yeah. Because, you know what I mean? But he has that work ethic to go and make that happen. So that, that I, I wish to God he would do it because I think it would be so entertaining. That's great, yeah. Um, but him, him tapping out guys left and right, <laughs> like just <laughs> God damn it, it's the Miz. He shouldn't be tapping him out, but no, wait, he really does know how to do this now. Next match, Rollins <laughs> and uh, Hunter uh, in a non-sanctioned match, and I don't. I liked all of it. I thought and Hunter looked great, and I knew though Hunter was going to have the first big entrance, of course, and he did, of course. I, I did I did laugh with and just me like I'm a Harley fraud like I wear the Harley boots and the Harley mm-hmm. jeans and like and like I like I like biker clothes but I've never ridden a bike I want to and like if I do get a bike eventually it's going to be a three wheeler because I'm big on safety, safety which it's you'll find out it, from yeah. one of the fan questions later I'm really big I love life like and I, I'm not I'm not trying to like kill myself anytime soon so like. But I pictured when I saw him on the Harley, I thought of Fraud Ryback with my Harley boots and Harley jeans. Like it looked so rigid on that bike, like he's never been on. Which I'm sure he has a bike because I'm sure he has probably ten of them sitting in his garage at home. <laughs> but like it looked like he'd never been on a bike before to me. <laughs> and like that's I don't know if you look. It just looked. It was probably just the way the handlebars were. It was like one of those big fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. bikes. But uh, it just looked to me like I was just like picturing it like and when he was revving it up after he parked mm-hmm. it and i was just picturing like can you imagine if it just would have taken off and stephanie goes flying <laughs> off and like because in all seriousness he came out on a horse he was supposed to come out on a horse years ago and the horse fell through the stage in rehearsals what really and i think yeah 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 and like they were like no it was a huge huge ordeal and like things go wrong up there all the time like undertaker's been burned who's a guy like Things fucking go wrong up there, and, and it, it there's no rhyme or reason to it. And like I was just thinking, like somebody, like you, it was. It made me uncomfortable watching, but it was. I thought the match was great. I thought Hunter Hunter uh, looked great, and uh, Seth is awesome as always. He's one of my favorites uh, to work with up there. So yeah. it was. Uh, and they had a story in place. So. We're not doing like a shill, like oh everything's great, but it really was. I think a good WrestleMania. The next thing was, it was an um, awesome pay per view. I will always no, but it's okay to it's do fine that. to do like that. I, but you know, people are always yeah. gonna flack. Either they have to have it one way where we shit on everything, or it has to be the other way where we're praising everything. Like sometimes it's just good stuff, man. Uh, no, they 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 hit a home run. The, the bump at the year. end too was very natural and very cool. Like Hunter, I don't know why that's a little fanboy, but uh, I thought that was interesting. No, it was it was good. They he knows how to protect himself as a heel, mm-hmm. and like in he's. I remember years ago, he came up to me. This was before I debuted when we were possibly trying to get Armando Estrada with me and come up as a heel Ryback with Armando Estrada, kind of like an Umaga yeah. type. But, uh, and, uh, but he, um, he told me, he was saying, we were talking about something, and he was just like, he was talking, he's always been obsessed with the dirt sheets. And he was just saying, you know, the dirt sheets always say that I don't put anybody over, but I always put people over. I remember that was one comment he made to me like six years ago. And, uh, but like he does, he does put people over at the right mm-hmm. times and like, but granted they're his guys, but they're his guys and he's in a position to do that. So yeah, I loved it. So next one was Bray and Randy, which again, and they did the stuff with the ring that was kind of creative and cool. And, yep. uh, it was, uh, there was a lot of wrestling on that show and they've wrestled each other. They've been involved in a long storyline. I liked that they did that because it made that match different than anything else on the card. And that's all that matters. And there's people that sit there and get mad that they didn't have as much time and whatnot, but they, the match played the Bray strengths in his mind games with Randy and everything going on with that story. And it was the perfect finish to that, to that whole thing. I don't think that again, this is just being couch booker. I don't think Orton needed to win here. You know, I think Bray could have had a long... No, Bray, Bray, yeah, Bray should have kept the title. Um, but Bray's never been one of their... He's always been protected to a degree, but he's always been a good soldier. Yep. And um, that was their way of... He got thrown a bone with the title. Like, that's just what they do. They, like, oh, we'll throw you a bone because you've been a good soldier. And, like, 
it it should have been for a lot longer because it would it would have it wasn't long enough mm-hmm. for everything that he he has given like and I'm talking like he has given them everything and and he's been relied on for main events for dark main events for years now and he's always delivered and it works and, and this could have been this feud is an ending and it shouldn't end yet and no. they didn't have to do it this way but whatever no but yeah the only one thing I would have changed was that and I actually think if I could again playing couch booker but I actually am a real booker I would have put a Harper up yeah. in the battle royal I think they would have that would have been a nice nod for Harper to win the Andre the thing rather than Mojo I thought that would have been a way to elevate him absolutely um to a degree where that would have been beneficial because I feel like he's a guy who's going to he's had more attention put on him as a solos competitor. They could have used that momentum and, and use that to carry him on in the singles role uh, moving forward. But in their minds, they could just, they could do that anyways. And, uh, but yeah, it is what I it noticed is. Harper now that his baby face slimmed down, he, uh, looks great, different shirt. He's actually tying his hair back to, to hide the old, he used to let the baldness kind of just show. And I thought that was awesome. Now yeah. he's got that top bun covering it up, but, uh, Use some of the topics, man. It'll help you out a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to endorse topics. I want them as a sponsor for this podcast. So <laughs> he, uh, I actually gave him my the a lot of the ingredients in Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner. Okay. I gave to him last year before I left, and uh, he asked me. He goes, "Can you?" G-? I gave him a stack of uh, natural fat hmm. burners, and uh, so if you guys want the the Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner, because that Harper's taking. A lot of the stuff that is in it, so it's uh, it works. He looks great. Now uh, we're yeah. on to you fought Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship <laughs> in this matchup. Yeah, no, I thought everything was. Uh, they went longer than they had, and uh, it was they played up to the strengths of both guys. They told that story. Brock had never suplexed him, I think, up to this point. And then he got a hold of him. And Someone brought this up. This is the first clean singles match of Gold that he lost in his whole career. If you really, if you really, really? think about it, uh, someone told me that, and I believe that. Yeah, nobody, like, you know, they had the fucking cattle prod. I don't remember him ever being Hunter. Hunter beat him before with I think the sledgehammer or something was involved, probably or okay. something. So yeah, this is the first there was one. always some shenanigans. Yeah, no, and it was. Uh, they they did a great job and uh, they both looked great and um it was it, it was they weren't going to go twenty minutes they didn't need to but they went longer than they have and uh, you know that that was the end of it so I, I enjoyed it they, it was different than every match was a little different than each other I thought and for a for seven, a seven hour, hour show, show that's not yeah. easy to do that that's why I I think it was people need to focus on that there was a little bit of everything on this show. And, uh, that's why I, we, we mentioned the women's match before Naomi. I don't want to skip over that, but that, yep, that yep. was a six pack match. Great moment. And I think the booking of the show, as far as like where they put the matches, they actually made the right call and putting taker and reigns last. I think that was, you know, Jr. return knowing what we you know. Yeah. With, with, with undertaker, apparently this is maybe his last one. And, uh, even if it's not with that moment of, if maybe it is, and him leaving everything in the ring, I think it was. Uh, you can't follow no. that. You don't want to. Fo- you don't want to yeah. follow that. The moods that like the moods been set. Like it was. It was a. It was a, a sad but happy moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, and uh, I loved the match. I thought they had a great again storytelling. This is my yard. That's as simple as it was, and they were they went back to that story time and time again in that match, and they didn't do anything all that memorable or anything in my mind, but it was just, they told the story and, uh, you know, and, and it was, it was well. I also think this, as much as Reigns has been pushed down people's throats for years, I think this is the moment that really brings Reigns to like that star level where I think the company wanted to have him, but now he's there, uh, from this. And what they do by that. And the reason, so this is, uh, worth noting, this is how you get the rub from somebody um, by working with them and putting you in the ring yeah. with them and and by beating them. Um, even when you lose to someone of that, but like depending on how you're booked after that, but just by being in the presence of the Undertaker, you take all those years 
and it kind of transfers over a little, a little bit, bit yeah. to that other guy. And that it's little things like that over time. And it's like Kurt Angle. This is another example. When you take Kurt Angle and you do backstage segments with, with Enzo and Cass and you put guys that aren't really overly established yet, they're new mm-hmm. still, it, sl- it, it raises them up just a little bit. And you do that, you do that a little bit by little bit, time after time, and then you create new stars. Yeah. And it's, that's how it works. And, and that's what they were – this was their way of doing that. This was their way of putting Roman on a whole other level, and they did. And uh, and that was and it's Roman's a great guy. So, so that was that was that was a show. I thought it was kind of cool that they broke down the ring after, and they actually left while they're breaking the set down. Takers stuff stayed there. Nobody touched it. So like broke. Oh yeah, really? I saw a couple articles on that. That thought that was super cool. Jim Ross has re-signed with the company for two years. Apparently, doing part time. Yeah, I'm very. I'm very happy for Jim for that. That's I think that's a good thing for him just with everything. I just saw too. I didn't realize that his cat passed away. Really? Did you no. see that the night that when he was at uh, WrestleMania weekend, his cat before one of his appearances supposedly passed away. Whoa! And it was like from a broken heart from yeah. uh, with with everything with Jan and and Jim probably was gone. Yep. And I'm sure maybe the cat was being watched. I don't know the like, and I was just thinking that made me so sad because I was just thinking of like, um, secret. And she's been sad with 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 Shiva being gone and stuff. It's like it's man, it's crazy how the way death works and and when like just animals and humans and it, it's it's sad. Mm-hmm. So like, kudo, I'm I'm happy for him that he's he has something to keep him occupied and focused on. Um, during all this time. And so. I know he was involved with other companies. He was involved with like doing the commentary for New Japan. And I, I know there was other things he was supposed to be a part of. But, you know, Jim going back only leaves more opportunity for other people in different areas. Like, um, it, it, you know, a spot opens up where places where he was. You know, I, I think that's, I think yeah. it's the right thing. He wants to be there. He loves that place, you know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's always, he should never have been gone to begin with, but, uh, it was, uh, he, it, it's, it's nice. He just, he doesn't have to be on there all the time, but it, it makes, it gives those bigger matches of even a bigger matchup feel when he's doing it. You know, I had, I had this talk recently with, with Kevin Matthews, a buddy of mine. And, uh, I've noticed that as, commentators have it really tough in terms of, I've noticed, cause I talk about this all around wrestling, run wrestling schools. I'm just around nonstop people yeah we can we can both agree on wrestlers a lot but a lot of people have crazy subjective opinions on who they think is a good uh commentator or color or play-by-play guy not an easy, that, like, not an people, easy job not an easy job and people have such fickle takes tastes and there's so little of them that i i actually feel really bad for commentators because i mean there's people i like and i've been in the room and, and said different things and then i hear a completely different opposite opinion like i like moro ranallo i've heard people you know rip him apart before and yeah. i've heard you know i love matt striker i really do that's awesome i like matt too yeah and i've heard people say no he's this he's that he i'm like you can't win and there's people i'm not really fond of and and people praise them it's such it's such a polarizing well, there's bill- so there's billions tough. of people on this world and everybody is unique and different in their own way. The problem is people just can't be respectful of other people being different. And they think if you if you don't do something that you like, then all of a sudden you're a piece of shit. And now with social media, these people have direct access to sit there and tell them, "Oh, you fucking suck, you're a piece of shit because I don't under- yeah. because I don't understand you." That's ultimately what it mm-hmm. comes down to. And the problem is is people that rather than be like, "You know, I I don't I really don't like him." Uh, but I'll just focus on what I like on the show and then live, yeah. living your life. They feel the need to like, fuck you. I hope you die. You're a piece of shit and you know, go kill yourself. That's what they feel because they're, they're, they're operating on that intelligence level. So, or, or they're, they'll just put like, you know, I really like you, but can you just don't do that? And it's like, shut the fuck up. Like, don't even, if you have the energy to like tweet someone, even like the slightest crit- negative critique, like what's the fucking point? Yeah, we get that a lot. Look at uh, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what the fuck have I done with my life? What have I achieved? <laughs> and then when you get your answer, shut the fuck up and go do it. 
Who uh, do you have a favorite commentator or color guy or play by play? I honestly guy? don't give any. Like I, I just enjoy. I'm, really? Yeah. I, I just okay. enjoy. I don't, I don't waste. Like I don't get angry at things. I don't even. As a kid, I just whoever was commentating was commentating. Like I just, <laughs> Come on. I, I'm not. I swear to God. I, really? Yeah, I don't like get upset. All right. Question for you: You're, You get your something happens, and and you're back in the most important match of your life for. Whatever the situation, okay. whatever the company. Say it is WrestleMania. It's you versus Brock. Who do you want calling that match? Do you have a preference at all? Uh, I would say Jim Ross and Morrow. Um, Jim Ross and Morrow. Because okay. Morrow's done a great job on my matches um, from my, my time up there. When he was up there with Kalisto, he made the matches uh-huh. even better by his commentating. And Jim is Jim. Um, if we're going to do three, I would go ahead and have King in there with him. Um Okay, Just, that would be because because Morrow's play by play too, correct? And Jim's play by play. Yeah, so maybe yeah. throw King in there just to give it a little balance. And uh, but I like all the guy. Honestly, I, I, I like I love David Otunga from a, a human being standpoint of of being with Nexus with him, and he's a great guy. And like Corey Graves does a great job up there. Byron Saxton, you know, I feel like he plays up a little bit too much on the Bailey stuff. But other than that, like I I don't like <laughs> I like him. He's a good human being, uh, and they they do. They all do their job. It's not easy having. God damn it! Plug the network, you asshole! Like it's that's not. I could only imagine. Yeah, I could only imagine. And I've that. done commentary quite a few times up there as Ryback, and like they're in your headset, and like you got to remember, you go to say something, you have a brief window to get little sound bites in there because you got three other guys waiting to talk or two other guys, mm-hmm. and like so it, it, it it's it's no easy task. Okay, so there's a little WrestleMania thing. And uh, we got a couple other things that happened this week. I don't know if you want to take a quick break. Uh, we'll take one break, and we're going to come back. We'll do some questions, and we'll wrap it up this week, I think. Okay, cool. We'll be right back, guys. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash big guy. Look, here's more, uh, here's more stuff for Audible. This is what you need to do. If you like podcasts, sometimes you run out of stuff because you listen to your favorite ones. So what me and the big guy like to do, we read books, but we read them by listening to them while we drive in our cars or if we work out or if we're just going around the house. So by going to this, keeps the podcast going, gives us some credibility, and will enhance your brain. So go to audibletrial.com backslash big guy so we get the credit. Over 180,000 titles to choose from on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player. I know Big Guy's got a book coming out soon. You might want to check that out. There's all sorts of wrestling stuff there. I listened to Daniel Bryan's book on tape. That was pretty good. But do it again. AudibleTrial.com backslash Big Guy? Yeah, sorry. I can't. I, maybe I need to read more. Teach Pat Buck how to, how to do a, a live read for podcast book. Somebody write that. In addition to that, I have something serious to ask you guys. Eh, not that serious, but it would really, really, really help us out. Uh, go to podcast dot study uh and what that is is they're doing a little survey to see uh taking a survey here uh they want to see what what our listeners like and helps us with the advertising whatever it is so if you go to podcast.study look it'll take two minutes of your time give me a screenshot you can hit me up on twitter i will answer you direct link show me buck never stops write it to me uh, I'll give you a shout out on the podcast, or I'll give you a free hug when I see you. But podcast study helps the algorithm. The, the alg- fucking a algorithm. I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I, I, I can do this. I can do this. Focus. Podcast study. Help us out. Enjoy the show. And we're back. And it's that time of night, guys. We get to some fan questions. We never know what's going to come in, you guys. You guys hit us from every angle with this one, and and this week will be no different, I'm sure. So uh, with that, do you want me to start it off, Pat, or do you want to do you want to hit me with some questions? I have a I have just a couple less followers than you on Twitter, so maybe I'll start off with uh with mentioning um, real quick. Can you uh, from Matt Highland? Uh, M Highland ninety five. Can you recommend any good sucralose or aspartame free protein bars? Quest has a couple of flavors um, that I remember. I haven't had them in forever since I'm home off the road. I don't really need to eat bars anymore. But um, the double chunk chocolate mm-hmm. by Quest. The there's a cinnamon one, a banana one, and also I'm forgetting a strawberry cheesecake by Quest. 
Those ones do not have aspartame or sucralose, but a lot of the other Quest ones do. So always read the labels, but Quest Nutrition actually makes a few decent ones um, compared to the rest out there. I've been eating the ones I got. It's thanks to my brother and his lovely girlfriend, Katie. Uh, they're the one bars. It's a mint chocolate chip, and I believe it has one gram of sugar, and I don't believe there's any sucralose or aspartame in it. So you can check that one out. What do they have usually a lot of those bars now? What they do is they have a shit ton of fat in them um, to make them taste better, but they have carbs in them too. Yeah, they do have carbs. It's so you're mixing your fat and your that Quest ones, the fat is lower. Um, they're like six or seven grams of fat. With, and the carbs are lower too, so it's kind of. What are the carbs in like a Quest bar? What do you say it's about? Because this one's about six grams of fat, but it's like fourteen grams of carbs. The, there's a, so there's like I know there's a lot of fiber in the Quest bars too. Actually, yeah. I, I I can't remember off the top. They're between fifteen and twenty five, but with a lot of fiber. Okay. Usually, when if so, say there's a twenty five grams of carbs. Now, why is fiber a good Wait, or bad thing? Real because quick, fiber sorry. is almost like a, is, it's like a, it, it, it's a negative carb. So 25 grams of carbs and five of those are, are fiber. So I essentially you subtract five off the bar because your Wait. body, your body doesn't digest those. Fiber is, an, is a negative Fiber is not digested. It goes through you and it helps you shit. Yeah. It's a negative carb. Holy, that's, that just melted my brain. I never thought of it that way. Wow. Yeah, that's why like vegetables are negative calories essentially because the carbohydrates come from fiber and your body just burns it it takes your body more calories to burn it than they're actually in the food. That's why eating all the greens you want are like it's negative calories. Oh my god, that just old wow. bodybuilder trick, yeah. God Fuck. damn it, pal. What do I got to teach you everything? <laughs> Good answer. Okay. Vegetables um, with your steak. Extra bloody. From uh, from good old Kaibak. You you ever do the stuff like the zip line in Vegas or skydive or racing exotic cars? I know this you're big a, into that. The question I saw, I'm a real introvert, I feel like, at times in life and like or I just I like I like the things I like. I'm not trying to kill myself. Um I don't like fly I don't like even though airplanes are safe now and like I just like being in control a little bit. Like mm-hmm. and like I got into the worst profession ever where I have to just give trust and <laughs> I always thank the pilot, by the way, when I get off the plane and I see him, I go, thank you, sir. Or like, ma'am, occasionally, um, even though Cody Rhodes doesn't think women pilots are as good as men pilots, man pilots. Uh, There's a the headline. Whole, <laughs> yeah, new headline for this show, um, which I was like, no, Cody, women are just as good as men at flying airplanes. Um, but they, uh, I always thank them on the way out whenever they're there because I was like, you guys, you know, you have our lives in your hands at all mm-hmm. times. Um, but no, I've never done that kayak and, and I don't intend to ever do any of it unless it's on a date where like, I really feel like I have to do it. Uh, but even then I, I probably won't. So I'll just look like a pussy. I'm like, no, go ahead. You can go. <laughs> I'll Snapchat it from Looney Foxy. If, uh, Ryback, Elgin and cage became a six man tag, would they be called the unstoppable fucking eating machines? I mean, uh, yeah. God. This is one of those guys that just wants that big guy, big guy matchup. <laughs> just fucking him and Bob are just sitting front row, fucking just waiting for the fucking big fucking master luck. Um, <coughs> I don't, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't know either. What do you, what I, do you say to that? Yeah, I don't feed me more muscles. I don't know. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, did you have any? Uh, I got so our good buddy, your buddy Gino Gotts who actually helped me out at one of the signings. Uh, he's asked this a few weeks in a row, so I knew I had to get to this. Any healthy Italian options for the little guy? Um, and and I'm, not, I'm not really... Uh, I cook a lot of the same foods, but I know they make some lean Italian sausages. And uh, they also... Hmm. Uh, pastas, you can get whole wheat pastas now. Um, yeah. and, and things like that are high fiber, whole wheat pastas, protein pastas and things like that. Um, and where you could kind of have the best of both worlds and, and whatnot. So you just got to make sure the lean sausage, you could get lean Italian sausages. You want to make sure their fat is, is under control because still even lean sausages are, are more fat than a, like a lean chicken breast or a lean ground beef. So uh, you just got to be wary of that. But you still can eat healthy and have some Italian food from time to time. And I know I'm a big Alfredo guy, and I know Ragu and another company too, I forget the name of it, they have a very low-fat, 
very moderate carbohydrate Alfredo. Obviously, it's not that thick. It's not that. Um, but I'm a big fan of using a considerable amount of that a pr- appropriate spoonful on like, you know, chicken breast here and there and stuff like that. Yeah. That's kind of one of my go tos. I uh, I use the pasta sauce. It's a heart a light. It's a heart healthy light. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I get the light one when I do my pasta. Um, when I like on my carb days with this keto diet, and I'll do a big thing of pasta and like just and that's it with the pasta sauce because it's low fat and high carbs. So, all right. I also okay another one from Pat McDermott. Uh, which Napoleon Hill books do you recommend? And there's three of them off the top of my head that. Uh, that you will love and that will help you in life. And anybody out there listening should download them or go and buy them, um, an audible, uh, paperback or Kindle form. And that's, uh, Napoleon Hill's keys to success. Think and grow rich and outwitting the devil are three money books by Napoleon Hill. You can do no wrong reading anything by Napoleon Hill. He's mm-hmm. had an influence on many, many of, uh, life's great people. And he's been ahead of the game from day one. So, those are the ones that uh, I would recommend. And then I, I believe we had one other question. I didn't write it down, but it deals with, uh, it was, uh, I, and I, I apologize, I, didn't, I don't have the name written down because I didn't write the question down, but it was on who we think would be part of the WrestleMania cuts this year, and it kind of had to I, do with... Uh, that, it's, I have it in front of me, sorry. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. Uh, Jason Worthing, Juice Freak 20, uh, 24-7. He actually met you at BBWF. Yep, very uh, nice man. And yep, him and his son. I uh, believe he was in the service. Um, I think that night he locked his keys in his car. I think oh, so. <laughs> that uh, sucks. Never. I'd been. like to hear both of your personal opinions on who's next for WWE's post WrestleMania cuts. Go ahead. Um, I don't know, and I don't know if they're going to necessarily. They they've kind of calmed down on all that over the years where it used to be more of a thing. I feel like with all the product and all the stuff they have now, they need is every guy possible. Yep. <clears throat> I, I think it's for a different reason, but I agree with what you're saying, but I think it's, uh, it's cut down tremendously where it used to be, you know, they'd call things black Friday or black Monday. And you'd see, yeah. re- you literally sit there and go release, 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 and just, they clear it out. And I think for a while, I think looking back, it's actually an embarrassing thing for a company to do that. I think that's, it was a terrible way of conducting, conducting business um, where it was almost like they were relatively trying to be boastful of the fact that they, you know, the whole wish you well in your future endeavors thing. I, I think that was very, I was in incredible poor taste when they, that was that a great, people. by the way, that was something I really felt. I was really happy about doing that to them. Oh before. yeah, that's right. <laughs> because what they—they, they, I feel like with when I my contract was up in like a couple days, and uh, <laughs> somebody from the company from the office messaged me, and they were like, "You're getting cleared today, right?" Because they—they they knew the date I was getting cleared. It was like mm-hmm. two days before my contract was up. It was a Saturday, I think, and or a Friday. Sorry, a couple days. You know, we had the weekend coming up, and uh, the message came. Uh, Could you let me know when you get cleared? And I instantly knew that if I would have messaged them back and let them know that I'd got cleared, they would mm-hmm. have announced me as being fired on dot com. Uh with uh, cause they fired I think somebody else that day or a couple other people. And really? they yeah. They were this is how they operate. And this is so that way the perception of me they would have had rather than me leaving on my own accord and walking out on everything that for the general public that doesn't read dirt sheets or doesn't have any uh, like clue about that, just, you know, where'd Ryback go? Oh, he got fired. Then it would be like, oh, the perception is this guy wasn't good enough to hang. Yep. So that, and that, and that's, they love to do stuff like that's how they are. And people, mm-hmm. it's not me being bitter or angry. That's the way shit works. So, and me being aware and privy to this, the moment I got that message, I was on my way to the doctor. I go, not yet. I'll message you as soon as they clear me. I'm not sure if they're going to yet. And then I uh, got cleared, and then I put out my video wishing them the best of their future endeavors. I remember this. Yeah. And uh, they then beat them to it so that if they were going to do it after, it would have just been kind of like, oh, that's kind of, sh- you know what I mean, shitty. Like, yeah. I, like, and so, and, uh, and like, I remember Carano messaged me, we thank you for everything you've done for the company. And like, it was a publicly like corporate mm-hmm. tax. Like, I was just like, eh, whatever. Oh, thank you. And, uh, 
that was my way of protecting myself from them being that, that was my whole reasoning on doing that so to speak was to beat them because they were going to from that text I got from the office they were going to they were going to fire me publicly that day had I not beat them to the punch fucking smart god damn yep. just the way you flow you got to ride like that but as far as a, <laughs> uh, I don't know why the fuck I just said that like that by the way yo 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 me and Vinny <laughs> Mac listening to that rap music uh, so <laughs> As far as, you know, I think now we're in a stage where it's, I mean, granted, they they did have a little, uh, there was a time last year right before, I believe it was May or so, or June, it was around the time Swoggle and Sandow, like there was a thing like that, but they haven't had, um, they don't do like they the way they used to in other years. Like, I think they're hoarding wrestlers right now. I've said this before, I believe, but uh, they're... Um, everything that you said is completely true, obviously, but I think they change over the course of time where what's their new obsession. And I feel like the new obsession right now for them is more than it's ever been is control and control in the way where that they don't want anyone going anywhere. Have you ever, Hunter, would you agree with this? Hunter has more control probably than ever right now. Absolutely. And, and right now, have you ever listened to his goddamn fucking theme song? Which one of there's seven of them? Which one well, are you talking the, about? Not the King of Kings, but his his rest of the game. Yeah, yeah. Listen to it, and, and talk. Listen to the parts about control. Like it is, just listen to the fucking theme song, and you could see it playing out in real life. I actually noticed that too. Has he had the most theme songs in history? I believe he's had seven or eight. You know? they've all been good. I don't. The, all been the, good. the King of Kings one is uh, my le- uh, is the least. Uh, memorable one out of all of them, I feel like, but I get it for the it works for him, for that uh, for the position he's in. Sure, yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, um, but and I also think now, just knowing the mindset, he's been distracted working out and focusing on his match for Mania. Now that that's not happening, he's going to focus completely on NXT and building his brand again. Uh, so the control thing, I think, is going to actually go up through the roof with you know letting people. It just they're they're trying to control the independence. It's it's so this isn't. Conspiracy I love it. Shit. I love it. Keep controlling it, guys. Guys, if you want to book the big guy Ryback, uh, <laughs> I draw crowds. Book the big guy at yahoo.com WWE. Sign them all. Control them all. Get those guys for as little as you can, and put them all in that big old pig pen, and fucking control them, and and just keep them under control, guys. Keep it up. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I, and I've heard, I don't want to be the rumor mill, but I've heard things that make a lot of sense to me that they want to pick. They guys, about a guys, second. everybody, if you're an independent wrestler out there listening, sign with WWE. <laughs> you have the possibility to be seen by millions and millions of fucking fans for fucking more money than you've ever made. You will fucking love it. You guys sign with WWE because that is what you're doing. You're signing for a possibility for the opportunity to be a millionaire because you won't make millions doing it anything else in life god forbid so go do it guys sign with wwe okay I'm good <laughs> i think you're being a little sarcastic but guys want to guys would you know it's no i want them all to sign pat i i want i i am the king i, I know you say the word it's gonna be me you and wade doing bookings <laughs> i am the king of the independence god damn it so king king big guy, I mix both the words just to really piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, but I, I actually think now with uh, I think we'll get into the thing where Gotch, you know, either he was released or he asked for his release. But they're going to be they're going to hold on to aid in English because God forbid the vaude villains do an independent. Thing. I think that that would be like a thing. A I, I, I'm head. happy. I don't, and I don't, and gotcha. You know, I've been made it well known that I don't like the guy. Um, and just because I, he's just come across as an idiot every time mm-hmm. I've encountered him. But he, and I, I don't ever want to see anybody ever lose their job or anything, but I don't, and I don't know the details of anything. But I don't think that like a tag partner should have to suffer necessarily because your partner was a dickhead or anything like that. But he, Aiden, Aiden was always nice. And like, it's good to see that he might have an opportunity to, to have to do something on his own. I don't know. Well, but that's it, like, but I don't. Funny. I, he shouldn't be released with him just because Gotch no he should or got fired or whatever. So, but it, it it comes down to intention. I actually think now, for example, today on on Meltzer reported uh, that how he's many matches in, has Meltzer had again? Just so I know, 
I can't. I believe it's zero. I believe it's zero. I always forget uh, that. Um, but I do. Th- uh, it came out today that Aiden's going to be in line for a push now, and and I go one. Where the fuck does that come from? Your partner leaves. It doesn't go. Oh well, now we got to push this guy. Do you think one of the writers is in the meeting at Stanford, like, and like somebody mentions, and then he, he texts Melter, English might be in for a fucking push, and then he breaks it. I think it's more so like, hey, let's put this out here. Let's let's give. If Aiden does something, I think it go, goes down to. Uh, if so, if they if got because I don't know if Gosh was released or Ash was released. The wording Maybe was very weird. Aiden English could be the singer for for Nakamura uh, for <laughs> with the violinist and have a fucking <laughs> an opera singer out there. Like just go the fuck wrestling. Just fucking that would be the you, worst thing. No, yeah. steal fucking money. That's the name of the game. Fucking, why would you want to kill your body and be crippled when you're fifty? When you can fucking go out there and sing in front of the masses and just get really over singing. Fucking be smart, Aiden. I, I agree, man. Like, now I think about it. Like, I used to think, like, man, I would never want to be a manager. I want to be a manager. Well, now. God like, damn it. Want... He's white, Paul. What are we going to put him out there with a Japanese guy? Oh, <laughs> put a mask on him. When does he blow the green mist? Yeah. When does he <laughs> blow the green mist, pal? Uh, oh, I but I was just getting to a point now where, uh, for example, I think, I don't know if I talked about this for, I've had conversations with Swagger recently about things. And, um, Wait, you know, you're cheating he, on me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting my agency, pal. <laughs> yeah. I got you're gonna have you're gonna have a whole fucking clientele list where I slowly fall to the bottom. I, we were talking about stuff in terms of his, you know, because he has to, to to be released. Uh there's a date where he can't he's gonna start wrestling after this date. And I do think that, that they're trying to gain more control as people exit the company where uh they can actually interfere with I know they were annoyed when I would book guys right away. Like, I'd have a lot yeah. of guys' first, you know, appearance. One was really weird. They have Howard now. Finkel send out those letters. Well, that's, a, that's really a fucking thing. I don't think Thanks, Finkel... Fink. So I'll say this here, and I think I've said it before, but there's a big rumor, but I think it's fucking true. That the I've Fink, heard it is from people in the office. It's true. The, I've heard okay, this. this. Yeah, yeah, from people that work there. The Fink, one of his jobs is to find different things like copyright infringement or whatever, the public whatever it's called, the intellectual property stuff, if you use someone's image or like for every, and you're one of the smarter guys and, and Wade has got it done too, where you, guys, if you think you're going to be wrestling post WWE, have your own photo shoots. Go Get do a, fucking, I did a photo shoot right after I left WWE. If you're going to leave WWE or your contract's running up, go just set up a, set up a photo shoot with one of the WWE photo guys. They can do it and send you everything by the way also. <laughs> <laughs> not that they didn't do mine okay but you, you can and i don't want to get any of them any heat they didn't i used the guy here in vegas actually but like th- which now they'll never do but go just get a fucking photo shoot done you can get a great one done between 500 and a grand really smart thing because i mean like i can't tell you how many times uh it goes my conversation one of the fifth things a promotion will ask for do you have any non WWE images because yep. this is such a problem because fink We'll go through the thing, find something. He then forwards it to the attorney, Matthew Wincheroth, who then sends a cease and desist letter over, which I could fucking wallpaper my apartment with them because I've gotten so many of them. I just want to picture uh, Fink just sending all the legal letters. Like, it's just not official at all. <laughs> it's God damn it, why person. do we got to pay somebody when we have Finkel? <laughs> <laughs> He outthink the Fink. He knows everything. He can do it. <laughs> it's a fake it's, legal team. It's, it's just, just not even his underwear. It would not shock me one bit. And then when shit gets serious is when they bring in the real legal team. But for most of the year, they don't have them. It's just the Fink fucking just... in his on, on his whitey tighties eating fudge sickles, fucking fucking looking up fucking all this legal shit for fucking going, events. Going to the WrestlePro Facebook pay, page and telling me how. Uh, Dude, I've gotten some wild ones. I've gotten, I've said it before and I'll say it again because they, I think it's interesting. I got they, one. They tried to get me to send over my, when I left, that I had to turn over all my social media, which yeah. was the most, like, the people wanted, like, if I put that letter out there, the letter I got, you would be like, holy fuck, this company is nothing but a big giant bully. Like, it is, and I fucking laughed at it. I was just, fuck you. Like, it's there, just stupid. There was one time where I used McFoley heavily on my past promotion. And they gave me their cease and desist. Um, the photo was from TNA. I was like, uh, he's wearing his Impact shirt. It's not from this. Con-. Then I realized, don't answer them. 
Uh, they're yeah. just going to fucking whine and, and it, it's just to scare people. Like they're not going to fucking take me to court. I'll, ch- I'll change the image and I'll put up with them. But at the same time, it's just like, or let them go to court. They're going to look like giant assholes. That's, that is true. Yeah. Very good point. You know what? That's a great idea. Everybody out there, when you get a letter, let them take you to court. They're going to look like fucking huge assholes. Mm-hmm. That's just, let's let them. I, mean, I got one for you too. I mean, I got one for you and the Hardys. That for time. what? I don't even know where they can, they can't do anything. So <clears throat> they, uh, was it you and the Hardys? I think, yeah. Cause it was a, it was a, something along the line. It was the name Ryback. We own yeah, this thing. They, they actually, they sent me my royalties this week, which was another solid check for not being there for a year. And, uh, they, uh, they have my name on there as Ryan. I was so tempted just to shoot old heat, the heater, Mark Carano, <laughs> AKA douchebag, a fucking text saying, can you update my fucking name to Ryback in your system, please asshole. But I was just like, I don't want to have any contact with them right now. So, but WWE, I'm sure you have somebody listening or somebody in the office. Can you please update my name to Ryback Reeves? It is my legal name. Ryback, R-Y-B-A-C-K Reeves. Thank you very much, guys. We were talking about the cuts thing. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to say with that. You never want to see, see someone lose their job. Um, but I do say that it is refreshing for me as a promoter to go, you know, okay, some people I just flat out can't have left there in a decent spot or not decent spot. And I go, I can't put you on a show. I, I, I don't, I can't. Uh, a problem know. is though, a lot of guys that they end up letting go, they keep off TV or their value has been decreased so badly that, that it, they they're That's why like when I left, I left being in a, in a, in a good position. Yes. Um, whereas if I would have let my contract run out, they would have either pulled me off TV or job me out like just fucking horribly, which that day that I walked out, that I, I saw that already starting from the contract stuff. I knew it was time to go that, um, that, but the, that where then when you leave your value is really because perception is reality. They're, they're notorious for saying that. And, uh, that is, they will like a guy like Curtis Axel, who I love, mm-hmm. who's a good friend of mine. He hasn't been on TV in fucking forever. Like a guy like that, that who's beyond talented, you know, obviously he's had the IC title run and whatnot, but mm-hmm. like if they were to let him go, like realistically, he could make a good living on the independence if he hustled. He'll get booked, because but it, it, it's it, just not. It, it, it's not the same as if he was in a better position on TV every week. It's mm-hmm. just the way it is. And like, that's what scares me, guys like that. And like, <clears throat> it, it, it's just scary. But like you need, like a guy like that, he's on every live event and he's big and he gets great reactions. Axel Mania chance. Guys, you know what I want? Fucking on Monday Night Raw and Tuesday SmackDown, I want Axel Mania chance nonstop. That would be you. The, Curtis Axel deserves to be on TV in a main role, in a good role, something solid. The guy, he has three kids, guys. The man has three kids, you know, and a wife and a family. He's the son of Mr. Perfect. He's fucking awesome. Let's chant for fucking Axel Mania and get Curtis Axel back on TV. Sign your posters, front rows. Blare those things on. They'll probably pull them and, and take them. But let's get Curtis Axel on TV, goddammit. All right. That's all I got. I can't think of people that I think. You, you know what? One thing is, like, I don't want to see people cut. But I think uh, one thing that would be helpful is that I think they need to do a better job of finding different roles for people once they approach that age. Or I don't want to say age. But, like, okay, Mark Henry obviously is, is in ring stuff. His better days are behind him. You see the NFL, and then people move on. They retire, and they're back as an analyst. They're back as yeah. an on-air. I know they have their ambassador shit, but but we know that there's probably a massive pay drop. But like something where it can be created in a way where someone would actually look forward to stepping away from the ring and moving into maybe not as high a paid position, but something where they can still have influence be seen be involved and i don't know if that really exists they should just take mark henry and big show and keep them on their contracts keep them on a legends deal use them for appearances maybe occasionally a tv spot to keep them fresh on tv occasionally just something whatever makes sense a choke slam here a world's strongest slam there and have them teach the big guys in developmental from time to time on your guys hire some big fucking monsters because those guys will always have a place in wrestling and let those guys pass on their knowledge that way. Pay them their fucking money because they're worth it on mm-hmm. that. And just 
use them that way. Like there's, it's, but no thought goes into any of that and whatnot. No. Like, it's just, yeah. It's not a problem of money. It's a, it's a problem of what organization. God and, damn it. We need Mark Henry and Big Show in the Battle Royal <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> no, but I hope nobody loses their jobs. And, uh, but if the guys that you always have to kind of look at, if you are the guys who aren't being featured on TV in favorable roles um, or not on TV, those are typically the guys like Damian Sandow who got pulled from TV. Mm-hmm. Value drops. Because you're not seen, and then you were you were quietly released. And that's what they tend to do. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> I think with that, I think that's I think we're good for this week. Are there any uh, any plugs you want to get in? No, the only thing, the only last thing I had was like I don't know if you want to get into or save it. You know, we saw Nakamura and Ty; they got the call up, and uh, we, we let's. Can- talk about that next week let's let's give the listeners we're going to go to because you have a pretty good story on on dillinger yeah and whatnot and i think we can uh save that for i think it's still fresh for next week and we can get into that next week i got to get up super early for uh, that's right. a flight here and uh in lesson it's uh, i got to be up in at three fifteen a.m Fuck. and we're already after 10 my time so okay yeah any plug skis though wrestleproonline.com uh, for all your upcoming New York, New Jersey shows, creativeprowrestling.com. Uh, and shout out to Eddie Shining Wizards, who edited this podcast and do a great job doing so. Check out their podcast. Follow me on all platforms. Buck never stops. And I am at Ryback22 on Twitter, the big guy Ryback22 on Instagram, Ryback247 on Snapchat. Thank you guys for listening. You've just listened to another episode of Conversation with the Big Guy. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolored paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road.